Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of April 7, 2016. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight, and I will be presiding this evening. Um, before we convene, as per our custom, we invite the public to come and speak. There are, there are some guidelines. Um, please limit your remarks to three minutes. You'll see a timer up here. Um, if you find yourself getting towards the end of uh, your comments and you still see that you have several paragraphs, please concisely wrap up. Uh, and also consider, the, there are a fair amount of people who want to speak, so consider the fact that in the interest of time, if somebody's already stated something that you were inclined to agree with, you might say ditto and then add additional comments that would be considered new comments. You're not, that's not a rule, that's just a request. Also, when you come up, please state your name and your address. And, um, and then also understand that the council is um, not allowed to respond. We're not allowed to speak. Uh, this is your moment. We speak enough as it is as it, uh, when our turn comes. So um, if you ask a question, just consider it a rhetorical question. It won't, it won't, you won't have an opportunity to get an answer. If you want answers afterwards, although I wouldn't wait until after uh, for the end of this meeting, this meeting promised to be pretty long, but there's certainly you can follow up with the counselors any time. Um, so with all that in place, we'll start with Mr. Paul Walker, please. Good evening, city councilors. My name is Paul Walker. I live at 52 Gilrain Terrace in Florence. I speak to you tonight under the national security effort that urges all citizens, if you see something concerning or suspicious, say something. I have some concerning issues that I will address. I won't be able to say it all in three minutes probably. I may run over, but I'll try. In my personal overview, federal government, state government, and local government are destroying our democracy, as well as our business community, our community, and lowering our citizens' enthusiasm for participation in all events. Professional journalism seems to have lost its way. Some local nonprofit agencies seem to ignore common sense and purpose, trapped by trying to be politically correct. I attended several of the deep BPW meetings last year relating to some of the some of the information under discussion here tonight. A copy of my minutes, a copy of the minutes of one meeting reflect my views there, then, and now. The starting point of the first meeting seemed to be on the basis of mandates executed from the EPA office in Washington, D.C., and supported by our own state Massachusetts legislators. If this is true, the legal ma mandates then and now should not be, should, should be followed up by our own city agencies, department heads, and city boards. Leave no stone unturned on a daily basis lobbying for financial help for grants and et cetera, especially for a project of this magnitude that's being discussed daily. Our people of our community and our business community, along with the citizens, should not be asked to fund such an event. A review of city grants over several years show little intensity for what should have been a priority to take care of the situation that is on our hands. A lot of nice things to have been, have been accomplished. But do we really need some of them? A common sense type of decision most every citizen has to make every day. Do we really need the goodies or do we need the priorities? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Arnold Levinson, please. Arnold Levinson, 14 Hancock Street. 
The question was asked at the last hearing, where was the business concern regarding the water rates? I believe that question has been answered and documented in articles in the Daily Hampshire Gazette. I am not alone in my concern about the progressive increases planned for water and sewer rates. Some questions need to be answered. I believe Williamsburg and Haydenville pay Northampton to treat their water. Are their fees going to change? And if not, why not? With a brewery, there is an increase in the effluent going into the wastewater. <coughs> Has this been accounted for? The fee increases are supposed to be for infrastructure, repairs and updating. What percentage of the water department budget has been devoted to for this over the past five years? Who is responsible for the work to be performed? And who will be overseeing the job? It has been said that some water mains need to be replaced. Does this mean that streets will be dug up when streets were repaved last year, there were long delays and detours before the work was completed. Do we have to endure this scenario again? The public deserves a protocol as to how this money will be spent. Thank you very much. Uh, Lydia Capel, please. Hello, I'm Lydia Capel. It's okay. Then. Okay, it's all right like that. I live at 20 Bottoms Road along with my husband, James Ferreira, and we've lived there over 20 years and raised our kids there. Anyone who has children between the ages of, say, 16 and 30 probably know one of our kids. So, we're, you know, we're just local folks. Um, I'm I wanted to just, just touch base on a few issues re regarding Bottoms Road and whether or not it will be accepted by the city. Uh, the first point I wrote to you all in a letter is that um, the city did give um, the um, I live at 20 Bottoms Road, and the city allowed that building lot to be created by the owner just before me in 1982. So as recently as 1982, the city gave a public building lot with Bottoms Road as the frontage. And one of the ways it seems to me to sort of um, solve that conflict would be to perhaps accept Bottoms Road as a city road. Um, the next issue is um, Bottoms Road is part of the drainage in Northampton. Um, there's a very large drainage ditch that runs up the north side of it and empties into Northampton um, uh, water system. I'm not sure exactly what. There's a grate there on Bottoms Road. And not only does it drain Bottoms Road, it also drains the water um, flowing down from the farms uh, um, up the road a little bit on Florence Road. So it's always been my opinion that Bottoms Road is part of the um, water management, uh, what, what would be the right word? Um, uh, pardon? Stormwater yeah, stormwater runoff and the general and, and generally maintaining the systems to function. Um, one of the things that happens if nobody cares for Bottoms Road and it is a pretty expensive to do is that the road eventually washes out and when that happens nobody on Bottoms Road can get off Bottoms Road. You get these just big holes filling with water and then all the dirt and stones wash down onto Clement Street and down the Clement Street Bridge. This has happened a couple times since I've lived there. Um, lastly, I just want to point out that Bottoms Road is a pretty long road and um, that's part of the issue here is that the, I know there are only a few families that live there, but the problem is that the few families that live there can't reasonably pay for the upkeep of this road. And it has been listed as a road as far back as 100 years on Northampton maps. This is not a recent driveway built for a new complex. And the cost is really prohibitive for me anyway to be able to live up there. So it, it puts me in a very awkward position. And I would like to believe that Northampton um, wants to take care of its neighbors and citizens and wants to help and would not leave three families in the lurch up there with the road possibly washing out and no funds to fix it. So um, uh, that's all I have to say. I hope this will encourage you to vote to accept Bottoms Road. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, John Rhodes, please. My name is John Rhodes, 172 Nonatuck Street in Florence. Um, I'm here tonight to oppose the uh, 
water and sewer rate increases. Um, but that's just a small part of the big picture. Um, in 2013, my partners and I, all three of us, born and brought up here in the beautiful city of Northampton. And in 2013, we purchased the Union Station. And, you know, I, our, our experience with this city has been an unresponsive city government. We have tried to do things. Um, we've had multiple meetings with the city. We have not gotten anywhere with our requests. I feel like I'm wasting my breath here tonight because I think the, the, the vote is already in. But you've got to understand what's going on here. I don't know how many of you folks were here in the 1960s, but if we're, I think we're heading back there. We have a real crisis in town. Um, you know, I'm working on the uh, Downtown Northampton Association, and uh, I volunteer to be on that because, you know, I have an agenda. I, 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 we put a lot of our hard-earned capital into this building, and we're trying to, you know, we, we, have, we have great confidence in the city of Northampton. We have great confidence in downtown, but we've, we're, we're, not, we're not finding a, a city council or a government here that is responsive to business. And, and you keep nickel and diming us, uh, you're going to find a lot more empty storefronts. And, you're, and, you know, when you talk about, you know, the increase in water and sewer affecting those marginalized people or the, or the most vulnerable, what happens when, when, when businesses start leaving town? Who do you, who do you turn to then? Um, you know, we're, we're, we're at a crossroads here, folks, and, and people have to step, step up and take notice. I mean, things are going on that, that, that you know, it, it's not a pretty sight. And I've talked to other restaurateurs. Yeah, I'm one of those, those bad restaurant people. Um, but, you know, there's, if you look at the city budget, and I took the numbers right off the city budget, you know, you can call, you can call uh, meals tax uh, level. We call it flat and declining. Um, there's, there's not more people coming to this town. And we've got to work our tail <coughs> off to get people to come here. And so I think we need a little support from the city and, and maybe just some responsiveness to our pleas. And, you know, we're, we're hiring people and we're trying to do what's right out there. But, you know, we're, we're, getting, we're getting killed. Last year, our first full year, we paid the city almost $92,000 in, in property tax, water and sewer, meals tax, license fees. And, I, you know, I think that's pretty good. Uh, if, if it wasn't for the fact that Dave Fortier and I don't take a salary, we couldn't have made it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Harriet Brickman, please. Hi, I'm Harriet Brickman. I live with Tom Reardon at 53 Bottoms Road, which is the farm at the end of the road. And given the resolution again before the city council on the status of Bottoms Road, I thought some history might be useful. We bought the farm, Tom and I bought the farm, in 1981 from the then recently widowed Mrs. Day. The property border was within five feet of Bottoms Road, which was owned by the adjoining Demon Farm. The Day Farm had a right of way to use the road, which then became a part of our deed. The city maintained the road, and Leonard Day had fashioned a turnaround to accommodate the city vehicles. We continued to maintain the turnaround for the use of the city. A few years later, the developer Jerry Jackson, having acquired a large part of the Demon Farm, came to us with two rolls of blueprints under his arms. The first was his design for the High Meadow Road development, coming in off of Florence Road and abutting our property. The project was for seven generous, graciously cited lots with a covenant prohibiting further development. In order to affect that project, Jackson said we would need to buy the adjoining meadow and the attached road. But were we not willing to buy in, he had another plan, not to worry. Rows of 35 small lots, and if memory serves, at least 12 of them within 15 feet of our property line, some within several feet of our house. We were young and naive, and what little money we had, we were saving to work on our house, which still had the original wallpaper from 1932. But we felt we had no choice and acquired the property and continued to maintain the turnaround for the city's use. We've discussed the resolution, the resolution which is before you tonight with our neighbors and with the BPW now for several years. 
The plan that Ned Huntley designed, which is, which is the one you have, is acceptable to everyone concerned. It means that the city will be responsible for at least the section of the road which is and has been in common usage. We trust that the city council will approve the plan and continue its historic role. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nicholas Mason, please. Uh, Nicholas Mason, I'm here representing the Hotel Northampton. Um, I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of the Hotel Northampton and the Fairfield Inn and Suites. We do not agree with the rising cost of water and city, uh, sewer in the city of Northampton. It is our belief that the proposed cost of increase of water and sewer is unfair to the devoted businesses that help make Northampton the vibrant city center it is. We feel that this raise in price targets city businesses in particular. It is our position that if a, pr uh, a price raise is necessary, it should be done equally between businesses and residential owners alike. At a time when so many Northampton storefronts are empty, we believe that the city should be finding ways to support business owners, not make it more expensive to operate. The struggles of starting and operating a business are very real, and we feel this hike in water and sewer prices could have disa disastrous effects on both current and future business in Northampton. We strongly urge you to consider all available alternatives to, to propose ra uh, raise in water and sewer prices in the city. Um, the owner of the Hotel Northampton and, and Fairfield Inn and Suites, Mansour Galaboff, was not able to be here tonight. He did want me to leave you with one message. Uh, the Fed Chair Janet Yellen has announced that they are very hesitant to raise the benchmark rates for banks because of slow growing economy. He asks you to take this into consideration and use this as a lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Suzanne Beck, please. Hello there, I'm Suzanne Beck. I live at uh, 691 Park Hill Road and I'm here representing the Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I'd like to thank you in advance for considering the Chamber's comments about the water and sewer rate policy that you're going to be discussing later tonight. Um, our Board Economic Development Committee and members have been, um, we reviewed and commented on the policy and I wanted to share what we heard and what we learned um, from them. As a starting point, uh, the Chamber does agree that the infrastructure improvements that are detailed and make this proposal necessary are in fact necessary and we were also pleased that the, in the interim between your last meeting and this meeting, the Mayor, um, was really responsive to the comments that he had heard from the chamber and from others. Uh, from others, so there were four issues um, that I'd like to go through that came up most um, most significantly, and you actually have heard um, some direct testimony on many of them tonight. One of them is the um, disproportionate impact of the water rates on medium and larger sized um, users. And of course, this includes not just um, you know Smith and the, and the hospital, but also many other nonprofit organizations and smaller business smaller businesses than those. Our um, sample we did a sample of organizations to find out what the impact would be. Um, the larger and mi uh, medium sized users saw an increase of between 15 and 30 percent in their water and sewer. Um, both fixed and um, the water rate and volumetric rates, and the smaller um, users saw an increase of between two and seven percent, and those were um, all business um, business examples. A few of those that we also looked at that we meant most of which included residential um, customers also saw a reduction in fees. So the analysis that we've done, and I, I think you've heard the same is that the the approach that was taken in developing the fee structure puts an inordinate burden on the larger and medium-sized users um, and we'd just like you to take that into consideration when you deliver the proposal. Uh, there's also an equity issue uh, when we saw that some users were actually seeing a reduction in fees it seemed to go against the principle that um, funding the capital needs for infrastructure should be shared um, not equally, but certainly 100% um, of the citizens should, are going to benefit from that infrastructure and hopefully 100% of the citizens and residents would be helping to pay for that infrastructure. That disproportionate impact continues with, uh, um, 
the increase in fixed charges, which I uh, won't go into detail with ab about, but that's those are many of those are new charges that businesses had a hard time. The fire suppression line, in particular, figuring out what their um, what that charge would be. Uh, I was pleased to hear the testimony about Northampton's business environment. I um, businesses have been crushed by a layering of costs, all with good intentions, but not necessarily considered in their aggregate. Um, businesses have worked hard to wring out the cost savings that they can, um, and they've also been in an environment where increasing prices and increasing revenues would be um, an option for them. So I think a reaction to this is also coming from the fact that we're in a business environment. There was a stormwater fee passed a couple of years ago, um, and it it kind of tips it's kind of tips the reaches the tipping point of people's ability to kind of see this in a more positive way. Um, we the Suzanne? yes. I'm sorry, you you're well over the three. I know. Okay, so just I will say um, that in the last couple of weeks, I'm pleased that the awareness on the issue has definitely been helped by the Gazette and by um, your deliberations. But I still think that there's a lot of people that aren't aware of the specific impacts on their business. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry for going over. Uh, Wes Hardy, please. Uh, Wes Hardy, 19 Mark Circle. <clears throat> so hello again. Uh, here we are again. Um, to all of you who have been defending this policy right along, um, why did it change if it was so good? And um, you justified the rates before, so now are you going to justify the new rates? Um, to those progressives on the council, uh, how does the new plan alleviate the impact on renters, apartment buildings, and condos? Uh, does the new plan achieve the three goals? Remember the three goals the mayor set out. Remember that the acting head of the DPW stood up here where I am, and he said, more conservation is simply not possible. To those on the council who said, this doesn't and this won't affect business. Coke disagrees. Yankee Hill disagrees. Hinge disagrees. Divas disagrees. Dunkin' Donuts disagrees. And the mayor, he disagrees too. That's why he changed the rates. To those on the council who in the last couple of meetings asked for, quote, even higher fees, and quote, can we raise it more? I expect to see you demanding a return to the previous recommendation or admitting you were wrong. The mayor thinks you're wrong. We are not Flint. Do not stand on the tragedy of another community to justify an unjustifiable policy. The ethos of this plan is bad, inequitable, and puts vulnerable people from our community in a compromising position. If you vote for this, and we are soon looking for the reason for the city's decline, you need only look in the mirror. This prepares us for a split tax rate, just as has been alluded to in the past. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all we have signed up. Uh, hang on, just in order. So we have uh, Bill Arnold, and then you, sir, after that, and then you. Thanks. I'm Bill Arnold. I have a 26,000 square foot building. Bill, I'm sorry. Can you? Uh, we can need you to state your address too, oh, please. 30 North Maple Street. Thank you, Florence. So I have a 26,000 square foot building in Florence. It's what's called an incubator building. My business is incubating uh, businesses, encouraging them to grow. For many of these buildings, businesses, my building is their first venture into the commercial world, moving their fledgling businesses from garages, basements, and apartments. People come to me with ideas for businesses. I give them a supportive environment, a safe, well-maintained building with low rent. I've been doing this since 1974. I think of the people who build their businesses and move on as my graduates. You'd probably be familiar with some of their names. Wright Builders, Bradford Woodworking, Ralph's uh, Blacksmith, Normando Communication. There's many more. I'm here this, uh, this evening because of the proposal to raise the water tax yet again. When I started in 1974, downtown Northampton had many vacancies and no one on the upper floors. 
The official politi uh, political sentiment at the time was distinctly pro-business as compared to Amherst. It was that sentiment that led me to buy my building. The building inspector at that time was Cecil Clark. He would come into my then derelict building, roll his eyes and say, I want you to do this and this and this and I'll be back in three months. Three months later, he'll be back and we'd go through it again. Each time he came back, the improvements would be made and there would be a few more businesses trying to figure out how to make the idea of a business into a reality. As you know, the population of Northampton has not increased during the 40 years I've had my building, but the expenses of running this city have profoundly increased. The latest water tax, which I call the raindrop tax, which is wherever the rain touches my building, I pay a tax, is a short-term stopgap measure. It's brilliant. My water bill almost doubled, and the city doesn't have to do anything except pay the consultants who dreamed up the idea. Such a program breeds cynicism. For umpteen years, the city has had the capacity to mail out and receive bills for water and property taxes. I doubt the new system, which requires sending those checks to Walburn, is more efficient. The latest water tax proposal is like the previous raindrop tax. The city doesn't have anything, doesn't have to do anything but collect money. It's discriminatory and terribly short-sighted. When we were in grade school, they told us fairy stories, like the one about the golden goose. As long as you are willing to accept a golden egg a day, golden eggs forever, but try to squeeze more eggs and everybody loses. The fact that the water pipe uh, tax proposal has, fo has followed so shortly after the raindrop tax has already labeled the city as irresponsive and inept. It costs $110 million each year to maintain this, the city. But the roads are a wreck and the schools are forever threatened with cuts. I think it behooves you, before asking for more money, that all of you as elected re representatives ask, is it possible to live within our means? That is, within the $110 million city budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Fred Gore. I live at 50 Walnut Street here in Northampton. Uh, I'm the general manager and part owner of Fitzwillies in Northampton. Uh, I came to this town in 1979, started working for a fellow named Roger Kerwood, who uh, was the original owner of Fitzwillies. Uh, he opened it in 1974, and many folks in Northampton to this day credit Roger opening Fitzwillies to the beginning of the turnaround uh, in downtown Northampton. Uh, and, and from 1979 until well into the 80s and 90s, I, I watched Northampton thrive. I watched businesses come and go and businesses get stronger. Uh, and, and, and the weak ones didn't last, but the strong ones did. And, and uh, you know, Northampton is stronger today for it. But unfortunately, I see um, a reversal in that now. We're, we're looking at more and more empty storefronts, uh, more by the, by, the, by the day, by the week, by the month. We're seeing um, more um, storefronts become, em become empty. And I just, I think that it's, it's becoming more difficult to do business in this town. Um, and, and part of it is a financial, is a financial issue. Uh, I, I look at this, this water rate increase, um, the split rate concerns me. It concerns me that eventually it's going to lead to a split tax rate, uh, which I think will make it even more difficult to do business in this town. Um, so I, I, I guess what I could say to you folks is, is I would urge all of you to let's just step back and, and think about this for a few more months. Let's take a little bit more time. I think uh, it was great that the mayor reconsidered his original proposal, um, but I think in reconsidering his, ori his original proposal, he um, had to be saying to himself, well, I, something's not quite right here and we need to, to think about this a little bit longer. So uh, I would urge all of you to let's not uh, jump at this thing and let's think about it just a little bit longer. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm your last one. I'm O'Brien Tomlin. I live at 21 Clement Street. I am uh, owner and uh, general manager of the Sierra Grill. And I'm also, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a little cold. I'm also the operations manager at Building 8 Brewing in the Cutlery Building in Florence. Um, 
first I'd like to speak to the Bottoms Road situation if I can. I live at 20, 21 Clement Street. I've personally shoveled three or four or five gallon buckets of gravel. It's a dangerous hazard when that road washes out, comes down right in front of my house, people screech to a stop. It's, it's something that affects the greater neighborhood up there. Briefly, um, anything we can do to, to correct, that would be great, uh, which means you know, hopefully helping the people out on Bottoms Road, which are my neighbors to the, to the upper, upper level there. Um, as far as the water, um, we're, we, I operate a brewery. I'm the operations manager. Sierra Grill, it's, you know, you bang your head against the wall all the time. The cost of doing business is crazy. Every invoice that comes through the door has a fuel tax to it. Any increment, anything that, that changes what my regular fixed costs are, difficult to deal with and adjust. My big concern is that today we just signed paperwork to uh, double production at, <clears throat> at Building 8 Brewing. Uh, we're being financed and we're going to pretty much double our output, which means also take in double the amount of water that we've been using. Um, as as with all my businesses, uh, we do practice great conservation and uh, we make every effort not to waste. We recycle our water, reheat it, do everything <laughs> we possibly can. Um, hopefully, uh, that fixed cost that I have in my future expansion plans will stay that and not double, uh, considering, uh, I mean, it's going to double because of the, my usage, but not double because my tax rate's going up. Um, if there's any way that we can avoid that, that would be great. It's uh, a tough business to be in these days, as any business is. Um, uh, this is 10 years with the Sierra Grill for me. Uh, we've generated over uh, $15 million in sales in those 10 years <clears throat> for a 100-seat restaurant. I think that's great. Um, I, myself, have never taken a raise, and uh, I have paid all my people incremental raises as we go. We recycle all of our oil, cardboard, tin, everything we possibly can. I even have all my grease traps come in and they pump everything out of my grease trap once a month and clean it uh, to avoid any negative impact with the uh, the city as far as we can. Uh, I think a lot of us here <clears throat> are making a great effort to want to continue to do business in this town and I think it's a great thriving community but I can tell you that within this last year my price per head of my customers we crack every track all of our figures um, we lost about three dollars a person this year on, on a steady decline. Uh, people are not coming out of as much I think they're spending less um, and I do get a lot of feedback about parking and the ability to uh, uh, be a consumer in the city of Northampton as being a negative thing and I hear that from customers from parking to uh, interactions with people on the street uh, just just the whole general rigmarole that people sometimes feel that they have to go through to participate in the business uh, environment in Northampton as consumers um, just speaking to that I apologize I didn't really have anything super prepared because I I have two little kids and we're a busy family but thank you all for your time thank you thank you yeah yes there's as as many people want to speak they get to speak so step up and state your name and address uh, hey, my, name, my name is rebecca robbins i have i own the woodstar cafe at 60 masonic street and um we do a tremendous amount to save water. Um, our bill's already $500 a month, and I find that to be a humongous amount of money to spend um, as it is. So we have signs up about all the ways that we can save water, and we have these, sometimes I feel um, like quite the taskmaster, you know, with the way we train people to do dishes, and the way we have all these dishwashing water conservation practices and um, people kind of think I'm crazy when I train them that you, you want me to do what and you want me to do really and I can only use that much water and I can't use the spray hose um, and that's because I'm already upset that we're spending $500 a month um, so if there's any way that that water rate could either you know not go up or not go up as much as what is proposed um, it would mean a lot to me that's all thank you Thank you very much. Anyone else? Good evening. Uh, my name is Chuck Senowitz. I live at 11 High Meadow Road with my wife, Karen. And I'm here to speak on the Bottoms Road issue. I, I have a land that abuts Bottoms Road. And all I want to say about the other three speakers is ditto. And, and, and I would add one more thing that uh, we've been working on it with Ned Huntley before Ned died for uh, several years. All of the people that live there, including me, who lives on high metal but has land abutting it, have worked out this proposal. They're all in agreement. 
Uh, the turnaround is presented on the plan uh, is being offered by one of the people who lives there to the city. So I think it's a, uh, a, a good proposal. It's been worked on a long time, and I'd like to have your support for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Karen Sinowitz, and I live at um, 11 High Meadow Road in Florence. And I agree with every, everyone on the street and everyone who's, who has property on, the, on Bottoms Road has agreed to um, the proposal that's set forth to you today. And so I just would like to reiter reiterate what they said. Um, in addition to that, uh, to go on to another subject as the time is going by, um, addressing the water and sewer rate, the increase in the proposal, I think it unfairly, um, it, it hurts business. And I'm worried about that because I see the stores that are closing. And um, I'm going to be brief about this, but I grew up in Bondsville, Massachusetts. And when I was growing up, it was a thriving community with, with the mills and we had stores galore. We had four grocery stores, including my father's butcher store. We had um, um, a dry goods store. We had, it was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And then we had the fire of 1968 where the mill started as a small fire and before you knew it, the whole complex was totally destroyed. Senator Ted Kennedy flew out in a helicopter that night to check out the situation. It was awful. It never recovered. Never. Your business is your heart. Your businesses, Coca-Cola, all the way down the line, that is the heart of a city. If you don't have your business, you don't have customers, you don't have jobs for people who live in the city. Uh, Smith College draws people from all over the world. They come, they buy, they eat, they enjoy the community. People come to Northampton, they love it. I am, as far as Mr. O'Donnell goes, I read in the newspaper, I'm quoting you, that you were worried about the, the little old lady who's retired on a fixed income. Well, I'm the little old lady retired on a fixed income. I'm a retired teacher, and I do work part-time at the Marriott in Hadley, and people, I talk to people from all over the world. They love Northampton. It is vibrant. It is safe. It is a wonderful community. But you have to have the businesses. And as far as the rate goes, the more you use, the more you pay. How could that be not, fit, not any more fair than that? So the rate, the way it is, I will conserve, the businesses will conserve, everybody watches their bottom line. And um, so I really, I really, I'm giving you advice, I know, but I would protect the businesses. They are your, your, the heart of your community, and you want to be business friendly. I drove to work this morning, and Michigan is advertising for businesses. Come l move to Michigan. It's a wonderful place to have a business. New York State advertises for businesses to open up there. You are very lucky that you have a wonderful community. If you drive through Bondsville today on your way to the term and hopefully that won't be Northampton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak at this time? Going once, going twice. Okay, I will ask the administrative assistant to call the roll, please. Councilor Here. Councilor Here. Councilor Present. Councilor Blake. Here. Councilor Labar. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Donald. Here. Councilor Sheriff. Here. We have a quorum. Councilor Klein is absent with excuse. Um, I would like to appoint Councilor Labarge to the enrollment committee. For uh, I think that you and Councilor Adams will get writer's cramp later this evening, signing a lot of items. Um, let's see. Uh, as we as we convene, the first thing actually, because many of the things that we're going to be discussing are actually starting in finance, I'm going to ask for a suspension of rules that will allow us to move from the agenda uh, to go right into finance, given the fact that the two items that we're going to be discussing at the beginning are have to come with a recommendation from finance. So I'll accept the motion. Accept the motion. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We, we did bypass the... Uh, we can still, this will still change, yeah, okay, we can still discuss that, okay. 
All those in favor of uh, suspending rules to allow a, a reorder of the agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So now we go. We won't do that until after we clear up yeah. the other stuff. We have um, no public hearings tonight. There uh, is an opportunity now for councilors to share one-minute announcements. Councilor Councilor Bidwell. Uh, yes. On this Monday evening, the 11th, from 5 to 7 at the Northampton Brewery, is a reception for uh, the Friends of National Priorities Project to meet the new Executive Director of National Priorities Project. Um, I, I chair the board of that organization. I'm very proud to do so. And after a national search, we've hired a new Executive Director, Nora Ranney. And uh, she will be holding court, if you will, at the brewery at a little meet and greet from, as I said, 5 to 7, Monday, April 11th. Anyone is invited to drop by. Any other one-minute announcements? No. Okay. Uh, communications and proclamations from the mayor. I, I saw him branching proclamation. Yes. Thank you, counselors. I do have uh, one proclamation. Um, it is entitled Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, um, April 10th through the 16th of 2016. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time which require the prompt response of public safety dispatchers, police officers, firefighters, and paramedics in order to protect life and preserve property. And whereas the safety of our police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is dependent on the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Public Safety Communications Center. And whereas public safety dispatchers are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services and are a vital link for our police officers, firefighters, and paramedics. And whereas Northampton's 12 public safety dispatchers handle over 42,000 emergency and non-emergency calls last year for the city's police, fire, and emergency medical services, dis dispatch and coordinate our police officers, fire units, and ambulances, and maintain after-hours contact with the DPW, animal control, and all city buildings. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job over the past year, and whereas Northampton public safety dispatchers play an active role in the development and training of new police officers, attend fire rescue department training evolutions, and participate in the Citizens Police Academy. Now, therefore, I, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor of the City of Northampton, do hereby proclaim April 10th through the 16th of 2016 as National Telecommunicators Awareness Week and to honor the dispatchers of Northampton Public Safety Communications Center for their constant devotion to public safety dispatching, consistent excellence in customer service, and the continued pursuit of the goal to protect life and property while maintaining the highest level of professionalism. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the seal of the city of Northampton. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, and now we come up to the consent agenda. Accept the motion. <coughs> Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now we will now move into recess for finance. This is where I transfer the gavel to uh, Council Murphy, who presides over the Finance Committee. <coughs> and many of the items, including the items that most of you are interested in, will be discussed in that context and referred back to the council where we reconvene none of us change places we all stay here and then then discuss and vote just give you a vague sense of what the hell's going on we're trying to figure it out as well so council Murphy, take it away thank you so uh, i'll call finance to order yeah, could you read our roll please here Councilor Allen. here Councilor present Councilor present Excellent. The first uh, item on our agenda is to approve the minutes of our meeting on March 22nd, 2016. Do we have a motion? To approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. So we'll get into our financial orders. There's quite a few of them tonight. Uh, the first one is 16037 uh, from the FY17 capital plan, $225,000 for LED, LED streetlights. Um, 
Order that, the sum of $225,000 is appropriated to pay the cost of conversion to LED streetlights, including payments of costs, incidental or related thereto, that, uh, that to meet such appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow $225,000 under that general law, section 44, subsection 7, pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out this project. Further order that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the appropriate officials of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws any and all bonds of the city authorized by this council as of the date thereof and to provide such information and execute such documents as such officials of the Commonwealth may require in connection therewith. Uh, do we have a motion on this? Make a motion. Second. Second, okay. and. Uh, we have the mayor or Susan that's going to talk to us about this. The mayor is. So is this the, um, I was, uh, can I just ask a point of order? Because we, I've had a member of the public ask about the re the status of the resolutions on the agenda. Oh. The, uh, the resolutions, were, those are going, uh, the two resolutions actually have to, excuse they're, me. They're in finance. They're, 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 in, they are in finance. They're in finance. Okay. So they'll be taken and So they have, to, they, they have to go through finance and yeah. get referred out. Um, just, I, I was, uh, and I, I, I told Lydia as well that this, this, this could take a while. Okay. This could take a while. And, and by the way, for the resolutions, and uh, their, uh, their first readings, which means they'll be revisited in two weeks if they pass in first reading. So um, nothing's a fait accompli, so just so you know. And if, if, if you don't want to stay here in these very comfortable chairs witnessing this the rest of this evening, um, we are available on NCTV. We're streaming live, uh, and you can watch it from the comfort of your home. I wouldn't dare hazard a guess, um, because it all depends on debate surrounding each issue. So, mm -hmm. so I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Meanwhile, back to LED streetlights. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, as the council knows, we've been uh, working on a um, on a conversion to LED street uh, LED streetlights um, as part of a um, energy savings conversion. Um, this is actually a project that will have a, about a five year payback, um, and so we are now getting very close to um, implementation. And we do need this additional funding to complete the project. Um, this is a borrowing authorization, um, and so one of the I. Um, I mentioned several um, several meetings ago that I'd be coming forward with some of our capital items earlier than um, than in the normal budget process because of either timing issues, time sensitive issues that we needed to get projects into construction. In some cases, you'll see some school projects because we want to get those timed so that when school is out of session this summer, that those projects can be underway. And then we have some other time sensitive projects. So this is one that um, that uh, Chris. Um, has been working on uh, for quite some time, and we are getting very close to, to construction, and we need this additional borrowing authority to complete the project. Questions? Councilor yes. Bush. Um, Mayor, I think reading in the book on capital improvements and talking about um, doing these LG streetlights, the upgrading, we own, what, 2,400 street lights in the city? I think that's what I have I think that's, that. what's, that's what's in the plan, yes. So looking at the amount of money that we want to invest doing this, it would reduce the maintenance charges and I think also the elimination of facilities charges by national grid, correct? That is correct. It will also reduce the energy costs, which are estimated to be $125,000. That is correct. And this is a project we've been wanting to do for quite some time. Um, many of our um, Many of our sister cities in other parts of the valley and the state have already done this. Um, it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, one of the issues for us is that it took a while for National Grid um, to develop a tariff for these LED um, uh, streetlights. So that's why it has taken uh, us a little bit longer to get to it. But now we do have that, um, that rate in place, which allows us to, um, to move forward with this. And, uh, and it not only is you know, obviously more energy efficient, better for the environment, et cetera, but it will be a significant um, cost savings over time. And the payback is quite short. It's a, again, we, Chris Mason estimates it's about a five-year payback in terms of the energy savings. 
Um, so that's the project. But it's a, it's one I, you know it was one that um, has been in um, you know some pa uh, the past capital plans when we did the design work on it as well. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the mayor? We good. Uh, then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. All right. The next one is uh, 16038. Appropriate $129,210 for the upgrade upgrades to replace the voiceover on the system. Order that the city council appropriates $129,210. Uh, from the INET Access and Technology Fund, which comes from Comcast, to be used for related infrastructure upgrades relative to the replacement of the city's voiceover IP system and uh, necessary to provide resiliency and redundancy for the city's vital public communication system. Do we have a uh, motion on this one? Just make an order. Second. Okay. And uh, the mayor's going to tell us about this one, too. So this is actually one of two orders uh, related to the via uh, voice over internet uh, system, but um, but this one specifically, we're basically trying to just marshal some funds <coughs> together. Um, these are funds that are currently sitting in that access and technology fund, and so we want to be able to uh, utilize them um, to toward the voice over internet uh, project that I know, I believe, uh, Mr. Pagan has spoken uh, to the capital improvements committee about. And this is one of those vital ones that we talked about. Um, our our uh, th former 3Com system is no longer supported, and uh, and we need to replace it. So this is funds that we have available for this, and so we want to have you appropriate it to that project. Uh, I can recall when we were having our hearings on capital improvement that also what you just stated, Mayor, that the system is out of support. And there also, I think I had read something to the effect that there were not any replacement parts available. That's that correct. That's a big issue. Yeah, they're no longer, um, uh, the company, there's no longer parts being manufactured and they're no longer supporting the system. So we are, um, so when we have, well, there, there's some stuff available on eBay, if you, uh, but um, but the actual central nervous system, the server itself, the servers for the system um, cannot be replaced. And we've begun experiencing some um, issues with that, which is why we've been rapidly working with um, putting together a, um, a procurement process to acquire a new system. And, and, and I want to give um, compliments to Antonio Pagan, our new IT director, because he did a very extensive, um, he worked with our new IT steering committee and he did a very extensive outreach to all city departments, to the libraries, to the, uh, to the schools, to really find out what they needed in a new system. So um, we're hopeful that this new system will, um, will, will serve all of our uh, cities, uh, city agencies, both school and, and city, um, for, for several years to come. So with a new system, we'd be looking at reducing the monthly cost by approximately, what, 20%? I think there is some reduction. I mean, we, we already experienced a significant reduction when we when we switched um, to the original voiceover internet system because we were able to shed many of our Verizon lines. Um, but we will see. So we are part of this whole process has been tweaking how many lines we need, how many um, how many lines we actually need. We still retain some of our uh, copper uh, Verizon lines. We still have some of those, particularly for the public safety uh, communication center as a backup. Um, but uh, but this will this uh, this system will um, will replace the one as I said before that's uh, on its way out. Okay. And we're Thank hoping, you. We're hoping the replacement will happen before it um, collapses. Have we done any sort of price comparisons to see if we can get this possibly cheaper with a comparable? Yeah, we're doing a bit. We are doing a, a bid procurement, so we are. Um, we've got a whole. Uh, uh, you know, we've we've done bid specifications for it, so we will be um, competitive, both competitively bidding it, and also um, we will be looking at the state bid list because the state has a number of uh, of vendors that they've already pre-approved on the bid list. So we are we are uh, going to be very aggressive about that. Uh, we also want to make sure we find a system that that fits the needs of the city as well. So um, yes. Uh, can you can you explain how the INET access and technology fund is funded? This is actually the final. Um, this actually represents the final year uh, fund uh, funding from the former uh, Comcast contract. 
Um, and so this was funds that were put in place to help develop and expand the INET um, over which the voiceover internet system operates. And so this is actually the remaining, and, that, and we actually, under the last um, contract with Comcast, we used um, some of those capital funds to actually build the INET and to, um, to construct and implement the, um, the voice over internet uh, phone system. So we're actually, there's this residual fund uh, money from that project that we're going to now use to transition to this new project. And, and this is uh, by contractual arrangement with Comcast in order for them to, uh, as part of the contractual agreement to subsidize these programs as negotiation. This is under the old contract. Under the old, the 10-year-old yes. the, the, yeah. the one. The 10-year-old contract, right. that's correct. Yes, but there's um, typically there's capital monies that are part of those Tail. types of contracts um, to invest in in the infrastructure to support. Uh, in our case, it was to construct the INET, which now wires all of our buildings um, and allows us to, to seamlessly communicate, you know, digitally and with uh, through, through you know, computers. It also allows NCTV um, to be able to um, also use that INET for its new digital signal, which wasn't in existence until the last contract. Right. Uh, any additional questions? All right. And no one favor of positive recognition of finance. Hi. Hi. Any votes? Uh, the next is 16039 to appropriate $375,000 for new radio consoles for the dispatch center. Ordered that the sum of $375,000 is appropriated for new radio consoles for the dispatch center, including payment of costs incidental or related thereto. Uh, that to meet such appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow $375,000 under Mass General Law Section 44, subsection 7, pursuant or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city there, uh, therefore, and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out this project. Uh, further order that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the appropriate officials of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws and any and all bonds of the city authorized by this council as of the date hereof and to provide such information and execute such documents as such officials of the Commonwealth may require in connection herewith. Do we have a motion on this one? Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. All right. Um, again, if you read in the capital program, this is one of our higher priority uh, public safety um, projects. Um, we are uh, need to replace and upgrade um, uh, our basically the consoles. They're the computer consoles that the dispatchers who I referenced earlier operate on, um, and in some cases they uh, they are they are. Uh, uh, worn out, and in a few cases, we're sort of keeping them together with duct tape, and um, and the systems themselves uh, need to be upgraded to be able to support the new uh, software that they're using. So, um, this is a project that was identified as a as a high priority um, in the public safety um, division, and also I think the capital um, ad hoc capital committee also recommended it as one of our top priority projects. We're doing a lot of work, as you'll see in the capital plan, on some uh, on our communication systems, trying to um, actually in some place, some instances, collaborate and and have make sure that we build systems that can be shared across all of our departments. Um, but this is one of our key ones for. Um, emergency dispatch. Mm -hmm. Questions? No questions on this one? Very good. Then, uh, all in so favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 All right. The next one is an order to appropriate $1,354,013 for wastewater treatment plant improvements. Order that the sum of $1,354,013 is appropriated for wastewater treatment plant improvements, including payment of costs incidental or related thereto. That to meet such appropriations, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow $1,354,013 under Mass General Law Section 44, subsection 7 or 8 or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out this project. And uh, I don't know, the finance director, uh, I keep reading that we uh, are authorized to file under Chapter 44A. You want me to keep reading those for all of them, or they're all the same? That hearing, no, uh, hearing no objection, and I, I, won't, I won't read that paragraph any longer. It's the same for all the financial orders. Um, motion to approve? 
Moved to second. So um, this is again uh, what part of the capital improvement program, and this is um, if you uh, looked at the narrative uh, relative to um, the uh, wastewater uh, treatment system. This is one of our um, major um, uh, plant-related uh, capital projects. And this will basically um, help begin the work in terms of the engineering and design work um, that will uh, begin to implement some of the big uh, uh, capital pro projects that we need to do at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, the other reason I mentioned several reasons why I'm bringing some of these um, forward early is because this is one of the several that we need to bond. Um, and the bond process, as you recall from this time last year, um, involves us having to get all of these readings in place. And they, they like to go out to bond in June. Uh, that's typically the time that our bond council does go out to bond. So part of the reason for trying to bring forward a few of these a little bit earlier than the budget process is to, is to get them out um, in time for that June bonding that we are, or for when we are offering our, our municipal bonds. Um, and that's uh, so that's the reason why bringing this one forward uh, a little bit out of order. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Oh. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Please, yeah. Uh, I assume that uh, going out to, to for bonding on this bears no relationship to the current proposal for water and sewer rate adjustments. Uh, in terms of this go in. in can this bonding process go forward independent of action taken on this? This is, um, th these are funds that will be supported by the sewer enterprise fund. So this is a project that's developed under the capital program. It is, you know, part of it is developed through the rate proposal that we have the funds to support that uh, debt service. So it is a proposal that would, uh, you know, there's other ones, obviously, there's clearly other ones in the, um, in the sewer enterprise uh, fund um, in terms of looking at the list of capital projects. But this is one that we anticipated in terms of building our, uh, building our rate assumptions. Yep. Councilor and, Adams. And then shouldn't this vote be taken after, <coughs> on a different night? After we, I mean, this, this vote's taking place prior to the water and sewer rate vote. Uh, that it, it is, although what you're doing is giving me the authorization. That doesn't mean I'll, I can actually go out to bond if I don't have the funds to do it with. Um, part of why we're trying to get the authorization in process, and again, you're, you're authorizing me to go out to bond. You're not, um, uh, that doesn't, if we don't have the funds, if the, if the budgetary funds are not there, and that's typically what happens with most of these projects, um, where we ask you for the authorization so that we can begin to get the process started. Um, and that if there's a change when the budget happens, then we would have to, uh, you know, we would not move forward with it. Similar to when you, you know, give us authorization for, you know, a project that we're then applying for a grant for. Um, and then we'll come back to you and either, you know, we'll either, well, typically we'll rescind the bond authorization. But that's the, uh, but no, you, this, is, this is one of the major projects that uh, is part of the, um, the Water Enterprise Fund uh, for, for future years. You have a follow-up? Sewer Enterprise. Well, I just wanted to point out to the council that, just so the council knows, which I think it does, that if the, if the council were to vote down the, the rate proposal that we're voting on tonight, a, a new proposal could come forward to us with the same structure that's been in place for the decade since the fees existed. So it's not as if this project could not happen if we didn't vote on that new rate structure tonight. Thank you. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, other questions? Um, no, then, then I actually have a question. Sure. And as it relates to this wastewater plan or water improvements or stormwater improvements, these projects we, we're undertaking because we've been mandated to do them by a higher authority, by DEP, by EPA. I mean, these are things that we have been told we must do by a higher authority, correct? Well, the, the, um, the wastewater treatment plant in particular, um, you know, we brought in an outside engineer who did a asset management plan, particularly looking at the wastewater treatment plant, which was principally built in you know, 1976. There have been some minor upgrades, but there's a fairly detailed listing of all of the things that we need to do um, to bring that plant up 
uh, to to the levels that it needs to be able to continue functioning. Some of it's just literally <laughs> electronics and electric electrical circuitry uh, that is uh, become unreliable. Some of it is some of the pumps. Some of it is uh, worker safety related things in terms of the chlorination uh, process. I mean, it's all you know fairly well detailed, not only in the capital improvement narrative, uh, but if you read the um, the asset management plan that was done. Um, and of course, you know, the other obvious issue is we are, um, you know, the plant stands between um, our sewage and the Connecticut River. And so, and it is a highly regulated in terms of how we process that and the discharge levels of the treat, treated um, sewage or the, tr you know, the treated wastewater uh, that's released into the, into the Connecticut River. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's heavily tested. <laughs> it's, uh, we are subject to um, high daily fines if we do not comply. And, uh, and this is you know, one of our most critical infrastructure in terms of, and, and it is heavily regulated by DEP and by EPA, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, no, water, I water, I mean, obviously water, you know, um, we built the plant um, under a consent decree um, uh, uh, because we reached a point where we had to build the waste, uh, the water treatment facility. Um, and, uh, and so that's a big part of the debt service that we're carrying uh, right now in the water enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, these upgrades to the, um, to the sewage treatment plant over the next five to ten years will, will be part of the, uh, on the sewer side. Mm -hmm. I just think it's important for people to remember that we did not dream up these high expenditures all on our own, that in many instances mm -hmm. we are mandated to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And these are not things that are in a regular budget because we don't, you know, we don't build anything more in there than we have to. But when a higher authority says you must do this, you must do this, you must do this, then we have to find a mechanism to fund them that doesn't cut into the other things that we're already doing. So believe me, when we, we do this, we don't make this stuff up. We're told we have to do it. Council Gabar? Yes, and you're correct about that, Councilor. Also with the stormwater utility fee, reading the report on that, the Army Corps of Engineers, mandatory. If the city of Northampton did not do that stormwater utility fee, we would have been fined every day. Mm -hmm. Councilor Dwight. I would, I would also add to that, not only is there a mandate, but there's actually a moral obligation and, and, and an obligation to the community in order to maintain these systems. And the way, I mean, we are only as good as our infrastructure. And we've paid dearly in the past for deferred maintenance. And we're paying dearly now for deferred maintenance. And each time we kick the can down the road, the can comes back to kick us in the can. So I think it's, I mean, I think it should, we should understand that it's not just the mandates. The mandates are a pain because we don't, well, there's no work around. But the fact is, is we are obliged. It is in the community's best interest, and these are part of the things that we have to work on balance to try to figure out what works best for the community in total. And I think that's very obvious that the, the water treatment plant, uh, the first that time that came up in the 90s, we kicked the can down the road and the price more than doubled by the time they said, you must do this now. Exactly. So it cost us a lot more money. So um, anyways, on this one, any other questions on this one, on the wastewater plant? Then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation? For aye. You say aye. 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 Any opposed? And, uh, Somebody talked about this in public comment. This is an order to appropriate $500,000 for street resurfacing and to authorize the bar borrowing and issuance of bonds to pave some streets. Order that the sum of $500,000 is appropriated for street resurfacing, including payment of costs incidental or related thereto. That to meet such appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow $500,000 under Mass General Law 44, subsection 7, pursuant or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city thereof and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out this project. And then the, uh, the, the paragraph is there, there again about uh, our doing what we can to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws. Do we have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second. Second. Okay. So this continues the multi-year plan that we've been doing on street resurfacing. Um, a couple of years ago, we began actually f um, adding city funds to um, our street repaving uh, projects, which had prior been funded solely by Chapter 90 funds. So um, our goal is to continue to supplement the Chapter 90 funding. Um, 
the um, I believe the at least the legislature adopted. I'm not sure if the governor has signed at least the, the latest infusion. I think it's 200 million um, in terms of Chapter 90 funds, uh, which um, we wish it was 300 million. Cities and towns have been requesting that that be increased, but the goal is to sort of catch up on that deferred maintenance in our streets so that the increased activity that you've seen over the past several years um, have, be have been because we've been able to extend the number of projects we've been able to do by um, supplementing them with uh, capital improvement uh, funds from the city. Um, and we're hoping to continue that over. And you'll see in my, um, my five-year program uh, that we're going to continue to do that and to, and to try to ramp it up over time as well. Uh, questions over here, Councilor Adams? What projects? What? Just, it is listed in the capital. Which, one, which, ones, which ones are these going to, to? So what's happening right now is when we get the authorization from the Chapter 90 fund, uh, we will then, the, the DPW right now is going through its uh, street inventory and developing uh, projects that it has for the coming year. Um, so the goal is to, is to basically say we're going to repave streets every year. Um, we know we're going to get a set amount of money every year from Chapter 90, which is what we traditionally do. Um, and so this money, will be d this money will be added to those projects. Um, to be able to hopefully add more streets. Okay, so, so we don't actually have specific streets okay, right thank you. now. That's what I was thank um, you. But we will announce those uh, later thank on. You. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Bidwell. Uh, do you estimate that we'll see roughly the same level of activity this coming season as last season in terms of the street? Yes, we do. We do. I mean, obviously, there's um, part of it depends. Um, part of it depends on. Uh, uh, you know what the the complexity of the streets were attempting to do. Um, someone mentioned earlier about the I forgot what someone mentioned earlier in public comment about about the uh, water line replacements and things like that. In some cases, we're coordinating um, some of those repaving to to uh, go along with a major water line or sewer line uh, replacement. Um, the um, you know there's a street in uh, Florence um, in Ward Five, I believe. Uh, uh, Hinkley Street, Hinkley Street, which has been um, under design now for a couple of years, but that's going to include a major. Um, you know, it's going to it's going to have a street resurfacing, but as part of the street resurfacing, we're doing a major overhaul of the stormwater, the water, and the sewer lines at the same time because w while we have everything open, so that's a project that's going to be partially funded by you know Chapter 90 and and some of these funds, but it'll also be partially funded by water and sewer and stormwater. Um, enterprise funds so it also depends on if we have a project like that uh, you know a couple of years ago we had North Street uh, before that we had Con Street but we, we are trying to spread them out across the city and we're also looking at a combination of in some cases doing the full you know mill and overlay in other cases we're doing ceiling in other cases we don't have to do the full depth re reclamation um, you know, part of the goal is to try to um, keep these streets in good shape so that we don't have to do the, so we can hold off on doing the full depth stuff if we keep the, uh, basically if we keep the water out is the key in New England. Um, and so that's, that's, we're trying to be very aggressive about that. But later, um, in, a, in a few weeks, I, I hope uh, we'll be able to announce what, what the, um, what our, what our intended projects are for this coming construction season. Pretty much every, every city in town is waiting for those Chapter 90 funds to be approved um, because it can't go out to bid or enter any contracts without that funding in place. So we're waiting for the governor uh, to release that. Uh, but we are doing the work behind the scenes to, to put together that list. Mm -hmm. Councilor Lubar. Yes, uh, I know for a fact, Mayor, because I've been getting calls and I mentioned that to you about, especially on my ward, many people are concerned of who actually is making decisions on which streets should be done when you have main arteries like um, Pritzbert Road, Park Hill Road, who haven't been touched. We're constantly, constantly, constantly patching and filling and the whole road is falling apart. Mm -hmm. So who makes these decisions? Well, as you know, we have a, um, we have a pavement management system where we're constantly um, on a sort of a three-year rotating basis. We're, we're actually going out and evaluating every roadway and doing sort of a physical 
analysis of it, an inventory of it, looking for you know cracking, looking for all of that. It's all being put into. It's actually a proprietary software that actually um, analyzes all of the city streets. It also factors in uh, the amount of traffic um, that each particular street or roadway carries. Um, and then it also looks at, um, plugs in some of the other things I talked about before, like are there, is there an infrastructure need under it? Is there an aging sewer line? Or is there a proposed something that's going to have to happen? Um, and then the computer actually gives it sort of a ranking, kind of an index, based on all those different factors. So that's one of the things we use. And then what happens is when we know how much funding we're going to have to work with in a given season, again, when we find out from, from the state uh, what our Chapter 90 allocation will be, and then you know, combined with this funding, um, then they'll basically s figure out what, which of the projects in the sort of the upper tier of projects they can accomplish with that amount of money. Um, and again, we do try to look at not just main roads, but we do try to do some smaller roads, you know, Florence, Northampton. Um, and some of it is, some of the work we do is the crack sealing that happens every year. We always try to do the crack sealing because that, in some cases where you may just have some, some small fissures opening up in roadways, we found that if we can seal them, that will extend the life. So it's really a combination of things, um, but they are trying to be thoughtful about which are in the most um, dire need. And there may be a project that's, there may be a roadway that's on the verge of, of flipping from just needing needing uh, a simple resurfacing to it's if we let it go another year it's going to need a full mill and overlay it's going to need you know we're going to have to do the whole thing so in some of those cases we're also looking to to prevent that from happening so that we're not going to end up waiting a year and paying you know t two or three times as much to do the project so um, the engineers work really hard on that to try to make sure that we're we're getting the best bang for the buck in terms of how we're putting that asphalt asphalt out Right, so they, in the book it stated something about pavement would last between 12 to what, 15 years or 20 years? Is that right? Uh, I, I, if it's if that's what's used in there, then that's probably the ideal that the engineers have stated. Um, and I and again, I we're no we're unlike we're we're like the state. We're like most every other community. We do have a backlog. Of, um, of this kind of work. We do have deferred maintenance. Um, and, uh, and that's the, the challenge is attempting to, um, to, uh, to stay ahead of it and to try to, try to make progress on it. I know when it stated the department spends a large amount of resources into pothole repairs, $150,000 for asphalt. Yes, we definitely have been, uh, well, we were last year and will uh, continue to be this year. We did actually receive some additional funding from the state uh, to help with potholes, but we will. We are very aggressive, you know, uh, when the asphalt plants open to get out and start patching potholes. Hopefully, uh, we'll see. This winter was not quite as bad as uh, last winter, so we'll see what the, and, but we know we have potholes, so we'll be out there. Um, we've already had some of the hot boxes out um, around town. Um, and uh, and once you know once we start getting a lot of asphalt, we'll start the pothole crews will be out in action. Uh, so if people here have potholes, report them to the DPW. You can report them on the city's website, um, and uh, we're going to try to get out and get those taken care of. Councilor Carter. Um, so, Mayor, we know that you're alloc uh, looking to allocate 25000 towards traffic calming. Will that come out of this 500 or is that uh, that's a, no, I can see Susan yeah, so saying in, no. Uh, okay. It's okay. So in, this, in, this, um, in this particular fiscal year, we've, we've been allocating funding for traffic calming the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. Um, and we are projecting to continue doing that starting again next year. This year, um, we were not able to fund that line item because of some other needs that we <coughs> needed. But we, have, we have excess money in that line item right now that we have available to deploy. We're hoping to be able to start doing that. So there is, you'll see there is a break for a year and then we pick right back up again. Um, but we actually, we do have funds in that account that we can, so it's not like there's no money for that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, but we were trying to balance some other projects, some other maintenance needs, um, and some public safety projects as well. And it's a separate line, it's not It is, yeah, it's not part of that. There's a separate line for that and for sidewalks as well, okay. as you'll see in the program. Councilor mm -hmm. Bidwell. This uh, algorithm that you described, mm. um, 
the, is, is, there, is there room in that for constituent input uh, complaint <laughs> feedback? There definitely, we definitely uh, factor that in. I mean, we definitely, if people, when, when people give that information, we're looking at that, but we're also trying to be objective about it and really look at it objectively. Um, ob obviously, everybody, you know, drives around the city. Everybody has, there's issues in every part of the city. Um, but we're also looking at, um, we also have to try to look at it objectively um, in terms of which roadways are, you know, you, know, you may have a, a roadway that really doesn't carry a lot of traffic and you have others that you know, are main arteries that carry a ton of traffic. And so, um, and so you know, there's, there's a, just a difference between how you approach those kinds of roadways. Um, you know, the Hinkley Street one, uh, that's one that has the combination of it's been, it's been an issue for a while, but we also have major um, utility needs underneath it. Um, so that also is a reason to try to do all that together. So, um, but we also have had some streets that are just, you know, I mean, I think, I'm hope, I hope that last year, I mean, there were some really, some ones that we heard a lot about. Um, uh, Milton Street, for example. Woodlawn Avenue, Woodlawn Avenue for example. Um, those are ones that we got to. And, uh, and they were, you know, again, they were in bad shape. So it's not like we were doing them because we got a lot of complaints. I mean, they were complaining because it was in bad shape. Um, so I mean, we, we're attempting to do that. But in any given cycle, we only have, you know, we can only do so many streets. So um, it's a balancing act. But in terms of, you know, we're definitely taking the feedback we're having and we're going out and inspecting those roadways where we're getting complaints. Um, because there may be things that have occurred since that, um, since it was last inspected, that may also factor in. Now, speaking of how long Hinkley Street's been in the queue, I think George Andrakides, as a young engineer, did engineering on that, and he's been retired as director of the yeah, department a, for like going on 10 years. It's so a complex. That one's been in the queue for yeah. a very long time. It's got some very complex, really stormwater issues and um, an outflow to the Mill River that's part of that. Um, so it's a it's, uh, it's a complicated project. There's also some sidewalk construction involved, and so it. it, um, it we're glad it's finally happening. Yes. So, any other questions on this one? If not, uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. There's nothing we do that makes people happier than paving streets. Right, this is 16042. This is the other half of the voiceover IP system. Uh, it's to appropriate $56,000 for replacement of the voiceover IP system. Order that the sum of $456,000 is appropriated for the replacement of the city's voiceover IP system, providing resiliency and redundancy for the city's vital public communication system, including payment of costs incidental or related thereto, that to meet such appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow the $456,500. Under Mass General Law 44, subsection 7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out the project, and also the language about qualifying under Chapter 44A is included. Do we have a motion? Make so, a motion. Second. Second. Great. Okay. This is just the other order that I mentioned was got separated from the other one, so it's, it's part of the same project. Okay. Any questions on this one? Okay. All in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, this is 16043, in order to appropriate $585,000 for a new fire truck. Order that the sum of $585,000 is appropriated for a new fire truck, including payments of costs, incident, incidental, or related thereto. And that to meet such appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow $585,000 under Mass General Law 44, subsection 7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out this project, and also it carries the language qualifying under Chapter 44A. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. This one's pretty clear. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, uh, we we funded and funded the other engine um, in a pre in a previous capital plan, um, and at the time these are sort of the same vintage, same era engine, and we weren't able to do two at once. Uh, this is one that's been you know we've had blown engines in it. Um, it's a 1980, 90 something, 1993 um, engine, and it's got um, well past the hour. They, they tend to go by hours in terms of. Uh, terms of that. So what we're planning to do is the same approach we used for the prior engine purchase. Um, we're not, we're going to buy a, 
sort of off the rack uh, model, which the other one we bought worked well, uh, as opposed to doing a full custom build, which is uh, more expensive. But um, Chief uh, Chief Nichols believes that this will this this engine, like the one we purchased a couple of years ago, will uh, will work great. And so uh, so this is a, again trying to trying to fill an important need in the fire rescue department that we've had for I know this has been on the capital list for a long time uh, since I was on the council. These two engines have been um, up for uh, up for replacement. So this will let us get this other one replaced. Uh, questions? Council I think it also stated on uh, there to the effect that the cost to maintain it was what at two thousand five hundred a year. It's become yeah. It's been a it's been one that's been in the shop a lot, and um, and we've had uh, our mechanic has been kept very busy with it. And obviously, we don't want that with a, a um, with a front line uh, fire engine. So um, so it has. We're, that's one of the other areas that we think we'll see savings is just on the the maintenance because once a, an engine gets to this point, um, there's just more and more mechanical problems. That, that begin to arise. And we use this unit definitely for the um, outside of the water district because a lot of our fires did occur on the outside. Uh, this will be a this will be a unit that will be used all throughout the city. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it'll also be fully you know, EMS equipped like our other engine um, as well, so it can also respond um, if our ambulances aren't available. Thank you. Any other questions on this one? Clear when you need a fire engine, you need one that works. Yeah. So, uh, hearing no other questions, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, all right, the next one is 16044, an order to appropriate $275,000. And this one is from FY16 Free Cash for projects in the Northampton Public Schools. Order that the following capital projects be appropriated from the FY16 general fund under the designated fund balance, which is, is our free cash. Northampton Public Schools energy management upgrades at the high school, $115,000. Uh, Northampton Public Schools <coughs> facade work at the high school, $40,000. Northampton Public Schools tennis court resurfacing at uh, Kennedy Middle School, $45,000. Northampton Public Schools front entrance and stair repair at the Jackson Street School, $50,000. And Northampton Public Schools chimney repairs at the lead school, $25,000 for a total of $275,000. We have a motion on this one. Make a motion. Second. Second. So these are all again um, items that you'll find in the um, in the in the multi-year capital improvement program, and they're ones that I would will recommend would recommend as part of my capital budget because they're school-related projects. Um, again, we want to uh, we need to get the um, funding in place so we can go out to bid, sign contracts, so that we can time the construction to happen um, in uh, June uh, when uh, kids are out of school. Uh, uh, so we typically, with school projects, we don't want to wait till the budget passes on July 1st, um, because by the time we get them out to bid and, and ready to construct, it'll be you know, um, August, September. So we, that's why we bring you these school projects a little bit earlier in the queue. Um, so that David Pomerantz and his uh, folks in the school department can begin working on them. But these are all ones that you'll have you have narratives for in the um, in the capital improvement program. Mm -hmm. Any uh, questions on these school improvements? All right, hearing none. All in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, the next one is an order for CPA funding uh, to appropriate two hundred or two, no, $2,860 from the CPA funding uh, for Leeds Historic Walk, Walking Tour Project. Order that whereas the Leeds Civic Association submitted a small grant application for Community Preservation Act funding for signage for the Leeds Village Historical Self-Guided Walking Tour, and whereas the project will help preserve the history and culture of the village of Leeds and its important role in the economic development of the city of Northampton, and whereas the project has wide community support and was enthusiastically supported by the Northampton Historic Commission, and whereas the project will maximize the value of community preservation funds contributed through extensive volunteer labor and donations, and whereas on February 10th, 2016, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend the $2,860 in Community Preservation Act funds be used to support this project. Now, therefore, it be ordered that 
200 or $2,680 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Act funding to the Leeds Historic Walking Tour Project and that the grantee meet the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Commission, the Mayor, and the City Council. Specifically, the $2,860 is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve. You have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second. Second. Um, and uh, Mr. Chair, these are not um, these are not ones that come from me. They mm -hmm. come from the uh, community preservation. And actually, community. we got so, uh, an email yeah. from Sarah Lavalley, who could not be here. Did anybody get that email? Did everybody yep. get that email from Sarah? It, yeah. Um, I, I'll read it just so that it, 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 it's on record. Um, that there's a small CPA recommendation on tonight's Finance Committee agenda to the Leeds Civic Association for the historic walking tour. It's a small project that has a great deal of support. Uh, she's not able to attend tonight. I dropped by this cover letter and said that she would be here uh, for second reading and that on the cork board up there is a description of what the project's going to do. And she said, uh, if we had any questions, if we'd be kind enough to approve it in first reading, and she could be here the next time it comes around to answer any questions about it. Um, but apologizes for not being able to be here this evening. Are we comfortable with that? that yes. Can do, send it along with a positive recommendation. Do we have a motion then for a positive recommendation? Um, I think it was, but I'll do it again. Do it right. Good. Then uh, any, any questions? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the next one is uh, with regards to a lease. Um, whereas Northampton Community Television, the city's community access television provider, leases studio space at the Northampton High School for its access studio, and whereas the Northampton School Committee voted to extend the lease with NCTV for up to 16 months while a long-term lease is negotiated, and whereas Chapter 40, Section 3 of the Mass General Laws require the approval of City Council for leases of school property. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the mayor is authorized to secure a lease with NCTV for approximately 26 700 square feet of space at the Northampton High School currently occupied by NCTV for a period not to exceed 16 months. The lease premises shall be used exclusively for public access television purposes. The school committee shall sign the lease agreement to confirm its approval of the conditions thereof. The lease is authorized hereunder and is subject to approval of the Commissioner of Education in accordance with Mass General Law 40 subsection 3. Do you have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second. Second. And the mayor does have information on this one. Yeah, so um, the uh, the uh, NCTV is coming to the end of a 10-year lease with the uh, school department on the current studio space that it has at the um, high school. Um, they are, um, they want an up, they're, they're working on some possible reconfiguration of the space, um, but in the interim they want to ex basically, they want to extend the current lease for 16 months to allow them to do that additional work. So basically what you're doing is, um, is sort of re-surplusing, um, uh, well the, actually the school committee has already voted to uh, surplus a lease interest in the school. Um, it requires a vote of the city council and it also requires authorization from the Department of Education. But essentially it will maintain the same lease that we have um, with um, NCTV for an additional 16 months. Um, in order for them to do the more full RFP process that will be required uh, for, an, for a lease longer than that. Um, to do another 10-year lease will require a full RFP, um, and so this will allow time for them to work, uh, for the school department and for NCTV uh, to work that out. We're allowed to do a 16-month lease um, because uh, the value of that lease um, stays below the $35,000 trigger uh, that would require an RFP. So this is sort of a, a sort of a segue lease um, to get us to the longer lease. And I know the um, NCTV is already talking with the um, with the school department. Mm -hmm. Questions, uh, Councilor? Um, I would imagine that their ability to negotiate a lease is directly linked with the the pending contract with Comcast. I would assume. Um, it's actually. Uh, it's it's actually um, I, I wouldn't say it's directly related to that. I mean, it's they're going to I think believe they're working on the same lease terms that they've had. Um, um, so, uh, but they are looking at some. The school may have some additional space 
that they may be um, willing to sort of add to their space. Um, so I know they're looking at some, I know that they're feeling like they could use more space there. So I know that they're looking at that. Um, but certainly the funding to pay for the operations would, would so come under that. that. that yeah. that's, that's and I'm going to be announcing some details about that tomorrow. So um, okay. about that. So you're not prepared to do that tonight then? Well, it's not on the agenda, and it's okay. not really <laughs> part of this. Uh, you didn't want any breaking news. OK. Uh, right. I was, I was going to be putting out some information on the on our new lease with uh, Comcast. Uh, but that obviously, the, uh, the funding, some of the operational funding supports NCTV. Yeah. Any other questions on, on Councilor Bidwell? I'm just curious why uh, it would seem like a routine lease like this is subject to the approval of the Commissioner of Education. Because it's in an active school building. Um, and so it's one of these provisions that if you're going to lease, like if we're leasing uh, the former Fiker school, uh, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. But if it's in an active school building and you are going to declare a space within a building um, no longer needed for educational purposes, there's the provision in the, in the Mass General Laws that says that the, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has to give their approval. You know, we, did, we had to do a similar thing um, with Clark School. Uh, when we um, when we rented out a few suites at Leeds School to Clark School, where they run their where they run their program in Leeds School, um, we had to not only you know, the council had to approve it, the school committee had to approve it, and we did have to get the permission of uh, of Desi to make sure that it was you know educationally appropriate. Um, and in the case of NCTV, that's that'll be you know a no brainer because they they are um, they do so much crossover work with the high school students and in media classes and photography classes classes and editing classes and things like that. So it's a, it's a great fit for NCT. I can be just curious. Yeah. yeah. They're kind of picky if we still have borrowed money from them on the school buildings. Uh, that's potentially an issue too, but it's, but it's really related to... Do, are, are they actively a school? Exactly. Yeah. Any other questions on this one? No? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 And we've been uh, dealing with the things from the capital plan for a while, but now we actually have the approval of the capital plan. This is a resolution to adopt the capital improvement plan for FY17 through FY21. And it's been submitted to the City Council on March 30th. If you recall, we had a public hearing on the back. Resolve that the City Council hereby adopts the capital improvement plan from FY17 to FY21, submitted by the mayor on March 3rd, in accordance with the charter of the City of Northampton. Article 7, Finance and Fiscal Procedures, Section 7-5, Capital Improvement Program. We have a uh, motion to approve. Make a motion. In five. Second. Uh, pretty straightforward. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of a Aye. positive recommendation in finance? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, now we reward the patient folks. Um, a resolution to accept Bottoms Road as a city street. Upon the recommendation of the City Council Committee on Public Works, the City Council resolves that the Mayor prepare an order of taking for Bottoms Road and further request its submission to the City Council. Uh, we have a motion to approve it. Approve. Um, any discussion on this one? No. No? no? Good? Um, second. I second it. Got it? Yeah. Good. Okay. Any more discussion on Bottoms Road? A little anticlimactic here. Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. And uh, up to Sovereign. Taking. Whereas the City Council in 2001 accepted Sovereign Way as a public way with easements as described on the acceptance plan at the time, and whereas at the time the, acceptance, the time of acceptance uh, of and the laying out for Sovereign Way as a public way, the City inadvertently failed to acquire Lot 14 and 15 as shown on the acceptance plan. And whereas Lot 14 constitutes the layout of Sovereign Way as accepted by the City Council, and Lot 15 contains a public water line that is part of the City's water supply, and whereas the Planning Board's permit for the construction of Sovereign Way included a requirement that the developer grant either an easement on or title in fee simple 
in lot 15 to said city. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the city council authorizes the acquisition <coughs> by gift or just eminent domain or otherwise of the of the fee in or an easement on and over lot 15 as shown on plan entitled Street Acceptance Plan of Sovereign Ray, recorded in Plan Book 190, page 68, and that further describes Track 2 uh, as, as Track 2 in the attached deed. Uh, no appropriation shall be necessary for the acquisition authorized herein. Um, do we have a motion on this one? I make a motion. Second. Second. Uh, I uh, spoke with Carolyn Mish about this, and she was not able to attend tonight either. I couldn't get anyone from the planning office to come. But the, um, uh, essentially, all the T's and I's, all the T's were crossed, and all the I's were dotted, with the exception of one. And that was essentially accepting the D or an easement to essentially allow for the uh, sovereign way to be extended, short, say, the Willard property mm. that's behind it be, um, become developable. Um, <coughs> And everyone was functioning under the assumption this had been done, this is to clean it up. But in fact, actually, the, um, the property owner is deeding the property over to the city rather than giving them an easement, which, would, which, um, which is an act of generosity and mm -hmm. also it's, it's cheaper for the city in the end. <coughs> and it gives the city complete authority over that that property so the uh, the planning office is asking for two readings principally because the attorney and the property owner are anxious to get this mm -hmm. um, to get themselves unencumbered and to also get the city lined up to be the way they thought they would be to make them whole the way we we're functioning under the assumption that we always were mm -hmm. Councilor Barch yes Council President, lot 14, isn't, wasn't that the layout of a public way in lot 15? Uh, Is, isn't it have something to do with the ownership of the land over at the public water? Line? Uh, there is a water line that's currently under lot 14, which, I remember is, which is privately owned right now, and everyone assumed that the easement and the, had already been granted and the, or the deed had been transferred, point of fact, it had not. Uh, and so this is, and in fact, actually, it was the property owner that discovered this discrepancy, and the property owner's attorney wanted to move on this ASAP because currently they they run the risk of liability that they don't really they're not entitled to have. And that should be our liability. Okay. Any Thank you. Other questions on that? I'm disappointed no one from planning is here to sort of describe this. Or show us a map of exactly where it I is. I can I can show you. <laughs> I've seen it. This, this is it. Yeah. Well, you see this line of Arvin Vitey mm -hmm. is actually the easement that they're describing. Mm -hmm. This is the Willard property and back. And rather than have another curb cut or another, uh, what they want to do is to have, reserve the right to extend this cul-de-sac to allow for a through road for any development. Mm -hmm. This is this has always been the planning's. They, they're not real keen on cul-de-sacs, and they're not real keen on dead-end roads. They want roads that actually have a uh, continuum and network. So that was, they thought they brokered this deed in point, in fact, had not. Mm -hmm. So now we know how we got all those streets that never got accepted, because we're <laughs> <in> 2001. <laughs> among, among other things, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, any other questions? Not that there's anyone here from planning to answer the questions. You're good. Yeah. All right, then all in favor of a positive recommendation. Aye. Finance, please say aye. Aye. Believe it or not, I don't know of any new business. Anyone know of any new business? Then uh, it is time to adjourn finance. Motion. Move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, now we come out of recess and we're back into the general council meeting and we're actually going to revisit every single one of those items. I know. Those of you watching home and those of you who um, in the interest of, of, uh, of the council, because it looks like that we're going to go late, I, I would, uh, if anyone would like to take a break, I think now's the time to take a break. And then we'll, we'll recess for about eight minutes and return here to continue the discussion. The fun continues. And what I would like to do coming out of the break is also move items up so that we can, the, address first the issue that everyone's sitting in for.
Reverse that because Bottoms Road, I'm sensing, is going to go pretty quickly, and the water and sewer rate is probably fair enough. <laughs> That's the council's preference is to move Bottoms Road up first, move Bottoms up. Sorry, uh, no one else got that. <laughs> Come on, we, we, we did. All right, I'm sorry, it's just blinked. All right, all right. All right. He handed for all right, so Bottoms up first, and uh, then the financial order and uh, water and sewer rates. So, uh do I, do I have the council's permission to proceed that way? Oh, yes. yes. All right. Okay. You may. All right. Thank you so much. So this <clears throat> this is item 16.049. This is a resolution pertaining to Bottoms Road. Uh, this will be the first reading. The uh, resolution uh, comes with a recommendation by the City Council Committee on Public Works and Utilities. Meeting on uh, March 28th, 2016. Uh, it also has a positive recommendation from <clears throat> the Public Works and uh, the Public Works Committee, and with a negative recommendation from the Planning Board. So, I'll accept a motion. Move approval. Motion's been made in second. Discussion. Uh, Councilor Adams first, and then Councilor Labarge. I'll support this. Um, I just want to point out that. If we take this as a public way, I think we should reconsider taking center court because just looking at the streets, common sense will tell us that one clearly looks more like a public way than the other, and that's center court, and it's a mixed-use street, et cetera. I'm not going to get into all the arguments for that, but I think um, that Bottoms Road, again, I don't mind changing my vote and taking it as a public way, but it looks like a private driveway. It's, it's an unpaved private driveway. And I think that if we're going to take this street, we should take center court because unless we use sophistry, there really is no uh, justification for taking this and not center court. Councilman Barch. Yes. Um, I'm going to support this 100%. Uh, I took a ride there last week. My husband drive me up there anyway. And looking at the information, I think it was a little confusing that occurred last time because I voted for it. And then all of a sudden, we're being told that the planning board apparently was requesting that we not accept it and the reasons why. So on these dates that I have written down on 11-10-2014, Mr. Huntley and the abutters agreed that option noted on the plan of land street acceptance would be a reasonable site for a plow turnaround for this road. That was from Ned Huntley. Then on February 3rd of 2015, Ned Huntley sent an email to Jim Fiera stating that Bottoms Road had a positive recommendation from the Public Works Commission. The DPW will continue to maintain that, that road, in which they did until acceptance by City Council. Then on February 25th of 2016, that's where there was some confusion here. The planning vote board voted to recommend that the city council not approve Bottoms Road as a public street and Carol and Mish at that point have broken down the reasons why. Well, I disagree with it and these are my reasons why I disagree. That, that street was way back many, many years ago. The contractor received a permit to build homes on that site. So when you get a permit to go ahead as a contractor and build homes, then you would assume that they got the approval and it's a city street. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and support this 100%. And also, I think we had the Board of Public Works that just went out there recently, and I don't the know, Council. Committee on Public Works, yeah. Were you there also? Yes. Okay, and there was what about 30 people that attended that? Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, right. And they had that meeting at five o'clock on site, and then at 5 30 back at the Board of Public Works. I mean, I mean, the Department of Public right. Works at their meeting, they made a decision that yes, they would accept it. So I'm going to support it 100 percent. I'm surprised to learn that the Public Works Committee met for this because I'm the chair of the Public Works Committee and I had no idea about that. 
No, no, no. There, there's some confusion of terms. The council committee. This is the committee that uh, serves the DPW. That she's talking about that committee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And speaking of confusion, I wanted to just give a little brief history on this. The, um, as you recall, uh, maybe Councilor Bidwell, although he already rehashed this for him, <laughs> was not culpable in any way. Um, oh. the, this came before the council uh, last session. Uh, it had passed in first reading. Uh, second reading, there were a number of factors. Uh, that contributed to some confusion. You'll recall there was a bomb scare and everyone in downtown was evacuated, with the exception of us. <laughs> Apparently we were considered expendable. But the, um, and there was also the fact that there was some other debates surrounding center court, as Councilor Adams mentioned, and uh, consequently some votes changed. Um, and uh, it failed in second reading. It did, uh, without the discussion or the consideration of the fact that the DPW and BPW, which no longer, BPW no longer exists as an entity, but had both brokered and negotiated and agreed to and approved uh, Bottoms Road f uh, for acceptance. Now, there were some 60 odd streets that we were reviewing uh, that came out as a result, again, another mandate from the state. The state said, you cannot plow roads you don't own. And then traditionally, we had a number of roads that had not been accepted as city streets. Uh, communities all throughout the state had the same situation, that uh, roads uh, that basically evolved into the city inventory or with the assumption of city inventory, but never official acceptance, um, making the city liable. So the uh, Board of Public Works went on a project to um, review a series of petitions to accept the roads <clears throat> to make us conform with Mass General Law. And we got through every single one of them, with the exception of the last two, which was Center Court and Bottoms Road. Um, on one hand, I'd like to say, well, we did pretty damn well with it, <coughs> given the fact that we only messed up two. I think, by my reckoning, it was a bit of a mess up. And, and I'm culpable. I hold, I take responsibility for that. I was presiding over the meeting. and. We kind of lost sight of this. Uh, I encourage the petitioners to petition again, once again starting this whole cycle again, which is now, uh, but the cycle's not identical because, as I said, there's no Board of Public Works, and the opinion rendered by the planning office is a lot more emphatic this time than it had been with previous roads, some with similar situations. And their concern is, of course, as I said before, that accepting the street would somehow allow someone a backdoor circumventing of the uh, zoning laws for subdevelopment, which I think is a legitimate concern. Um, one that precedent's already been set. So maybe, I mean, we'll have to consider zoning that may have to correct that or some kind of order that would correct that going forward um, for potential future petitions. But at this point, I believe that Bottoms Road is, has met the conditions and terms and the and in, in conjunction with working with the DPW and the BPW to uh, allow for this, to build the grant and easement, allow for a turnaround for a plow truck to turn around and to service the residents on that, um, on that road. Yes, Councilor. Also to Councilor, um, I have to support Councillor Adams on his suggestion about Center Court. I think it should come back to City Council, and I'm hoping it does. Uh, Councillor Murphy and then Councillor O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. well, I just, for a moment, like to address the Planning Board's concern that this creates a backdoor mechanism for others to confront private driveways. I mean, let's accept their term private driveway. This is a private driveway that the city thought was a street for over 50 years. In the mid-80s, it granted building permits on it because it thought it was a street. Um, so I, I think that it's a bunch of pooey that they think this circumvents their regulatory authority or whatever puts a snit in their, you know, in their world over there. But this is a unique circumstance. You know, this isn't a driveway that's being made into a street. This is a street that fell through the cracks that we're simply reiterating after 50 years is still a street. So I, you know, they may be concerned about it, but I think that's a lot of why we are here in our good judgment to say no to our friendly bureaucrats that it's a street and it's going to be a street because it's the right thing to do. So thank you. Council Murphy, aka Antonin Scalia, with a 
your, your hickory jiggery remark. Thank you for. <laughs> not a bad guy to be compared to if you're me. No, no, I'm sorry. That was, yeah, yeah, oh. sorry. Uh, <laughs> Councilor O'Donnell and then <laughs> Councilor Shera. You're not going to name my Supreme Court doppelganger, are you? <laughs> Um, I guess it'll depend on my comments. I would just like to explain my vote because I voted against this last time. Um, and it's funny because last time there was no, there was a neutral recommendation from the planning board. And so it, it's, it seemed bizarre to me now there's a very vehement opposition, letter in opposition to it. Mm -hmm. But either way, that might have been just confusion in, in the department. But um, it actually said what I was kind of concerned about. I, I think I said at the time, it just looks like a long driveway. And I realize you say that it's it's um, it's sort of um, um, it can be misinterpreted when you say that, like as though it's an insult or something. Um, but I think it's a it's it's not. I know the people who live on the street they consider it a street, but it is a fact that this way it's called a way does not co uh, conform to subdivision regulations. It's a fact. The issue is that um, we've accepted many other streets that don't conform to subdivision regulations. The thing of it is, they're all kind of, you know, downtown, or people have used it for a very, very long time. And this always seemed to me to be right on the edge. Because 50 years, I feel like subdivision regulations, when they come into being, like in the 50s, I think. So I would be curious, when we say it's been used as a public street forever, exactly how long is that? But the major point I want to make is, um, I actually think it's quite different from Center Court. I don't want to discuss Center Court right now, but I think it's quite different because um, I, I don't feel there is any moral obligation for the city to take it over at all. And that's what I heard from many residents um, on other streets, including Center Court. Like, this must happen. And I have to say, as a principle, I don't like the idea that private development can then prevail upon government to take it over and pay their expenses. I don't like that idea. But it's different in this case, and I feel that there has been another, I've evolved on this, listening to this, because it seems like there is a commitment from the city that they that we want to do something that the DPW has worked with the residents on this for a while, to, you know, to create a turnaround and to make other improvements um, on the on this way, because you know the DPW in, in consultation with the residents has decided that it would be beneficial to the city. That's a major difference. So I don't think we're I don't think we you know this is something we must do, but I think it's something we've decided it would be good to do, and so uh, for that reason, um, I'm I'm happy to support it this time. Council Chair. I would just say that I, I've heard no one from Bottoms Road say that they have any interest in restricting access to that road, which makes it, it seems to me, is a, is a major difference from Center Court for me. Um, it's They don't have a desire for it to be, still be treated as a private way that other people aren't able to access. And one of the, uh, I guess is the <coughs> letter that we got today, even talks about how there's there's a footpath or although you may not still be able to drive all the way through it, people could still walk that way. Um, so I, I, that is a major difference for me between those two streets. Um, I would also like to say I, I've allowed this, but I think the discussion about center court, while it may have some relevance, is not also on the agenda. So I'd, I'd feel uncomfortable if we continue that conversation that it, but I've allowed it in all points, so. Um, also, it should be noted that historically the, the DPW resisted accepting roads, even roads that conformed. They didn't want to add to their inventory once upon a time. Now, in both cases, I think the, what the reason you see a reflection and change in the planning board's recommendation is the planning board has changed since this uh, number of members have changed since, um, since the initial, uh, initial uh, opinion. <coughs> Council has changed. And that's these bodies do change, and the DPW has changed, and the Board of Public Works no longer exists. So consequently, the opinions and the, and the ideas and the notions are subject to change as the constituencies change too. So uh, there, there is no, I, 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 the th thing is I don't think we, the aspersions need to be assigned because it's not, it, it is the nature of governance and that's how it works. So I, I'm, um, and I take everyone's point. I think everyone has very good points as far as this goes. But I, I personally would be glad to see the, the end of this discussion. And then we will, I mean, that's been ongoing now for going on four years now. So uh, not just Bottoms Road, but all the street acceptance. And it will make us com uh, conform to Massachusetts general law, at least for the time being, until they change the law again. So um, any other discussion? 
Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. 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 That passes in first reading and will be subject to another vote on our next meeting in two weeks. Okay. And now to the main event. Uh, this is item 16.030, financial order to establish the water and sewer rates for FY 2017. This is second reading. I'll accept a motion to run on the Second. Discussion. And the mayor is here and Susan Wright is here. We have no representatives from the DPW at this point, but the mayor is prepared to speak. So, Councilor Adams, or did you have did you have your hand up? Or? Well, it, it, is there a presentation? Are we going straight to com Are you looking for discussion? It's part of discussion. He's only here for, there's no, there, you have no, for, do you have a presentation on the revisions? I, I do not other than to um, present them and, and um, ask for the council. Okay, and, and before you do actually, and why don't we do that, the mayor presents the revisions and um, the uh, administrative and assistant and I have, have checked this out. Councilor Adams brought up a, book, uh, a good point about process here and um, in order for the amendments to be accepted, we have to propose the amendments on the floor. And they have to be accepted, and they have to be seconded and accepted. That's so. There we go. So, Your Honor, which I yes fully understood when I submitted them. Right. No, I, I'm just I, make it clear yeah. to all the people who get to play in this party. So, exactly. Um, so um, I believe I, I I sent a memo to you with these uh, provo proposed revisions to the rates that kind of explains the rationale for it. Um, and it was just on the screen. Uh, the rates were just on the screen. But you can basically see that there are um, three changes to the uh, volumetric rates for water. Um, and again, the, the rates before you are the volumetric weights, uh, rates for water and the, um, and the volumetric weight rate for sewer. Um, so what I'm proposing in this revision is to reduce proportionally um, the rate. And you can see going from 473 to 436 in the tier one consumption. Uh, 621 to 582, and then and then um, 609 to 572. So as I pointed out in the memo, um, we have gotten a lot of feedback, and we've been fielding questions and answering questions. I've had the opportunity to, um, you know, I had an initial meeting with the Chamber um, Economic Development Committee back in February. Um, I've had some follow-up uh, meetings with the Chamber leadership, and uh, again, to, got feedback, which was really, I mean, the point of this process. We've um, we started talking about this to you in January, um, and we've um, gone through a series of you know public hearings, and and um, and we've tried to present as much information as we can. We've tried to put information out in terms of um, the calculator feature. Um, actually, we got some data today on the calculator. I think we've had about 631 hits on the calculator. It kind of shows you the. You can sort of tell when there have been meetings or hearings or a story about it, it's the, the usage of the calculator kind of spikes. But um, people have been using that, and I think that's been helpful for people um, to, uh, to be able to see how it impacts their business. We've tried to provide information about um, individual businesses, and we've fielded requests from the press to run additional data on, on specific businesses. Um, so the revisions are really an attempt to um, acknowledge the fact that uh, when we're making this shift, um, not just a rate increase, but we're also doing a structural change and we're also looking at um, increasing fixed fees that have been uh, not increased in a significant amount of time, um, that that uh, the impact of those increases on the fixed fees combined with the increase in the volumetric rates we're showing for some um, users uh, larger increases. So we're trying to acknowledge that. And so what we did is, as I outlined in the memo, is in looking at the the plan, the budgetary plan for FY17, we're going to use more money from capital stabilization uh, to fund um, our expenses and our um, you know, capital and debt service in that budget. So by lowering the volumetric rates, uh, that allows us the room to be able to lower the volumetric rates. Um, and again, we're doing it proportionally, and we're doing it across those three different tiers uh, proportionally as well. So it, it basically lowers all of the volumetric rates. And we've provided updated slides, um, which are on the 
you know, in the same place they've been, which show that how this change affects um, different users. And, um, and again, the calculator's been updated to provide information on that. So my request would be, obviously, you've, um, you've uh, passed the, my original recommendation on first reading. My request would be that uh, my original recommendation uh, be amended uh, to reflect these new um, revised uh, volumetric rates for water. And just to reiterate, we are voting only on the volumetric rates, not on the fixed fees and the fire fees. Uh, Councilor Adams, you want to speak first? Has, has the solicitor gotten back to you yet on whether or not this is simply an up or down vote, which we have no power to amend, like the administrative orders? There is uh, no comment. I've, I've texted them earlier, and I have no response from them yet. From who? I asked the city solicitor, uh, Councilor Adams had a question about whether we merely have the power to up and down vote these rates as opposed to amending them on the floor um, per sponsor request. Um, I'm of the opinion that we do. I, we, I see no nothing in our rules that precludes that and nothing in Robert's rules that seems to preclude that. But I wanted to be safe to get, get the opinion of the city solicitor and I haven't heard back from. I, I, in fairness, it's pretty short notice. It's like an hour before the meeting, so but I've not heard from him yet. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Kern. Or do, do you need to uh, have a motion for these amendments? Yes. So I'll offer that amendment okay. uh, the, as a group, the, those recommended by the mayor. The volumetric rate changes. Is there a second? <laughs> yep. Is there? Second. Second, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Questions and discussion? Uh, Councilor Amson, Councilor. Um, this is com this, I don't have any questions for the mayor. This is just commentary. Okay. Um, last time, obviously, I was the only person who voted against this. Um, and it seems to me that it, the concerns I raised have now been, um, many agree with it, it seems to me. And, um, and it's important to note that a lot of people have spoken out between second, first and second reading. Um, and it's now obvious to me what I knew before is that this proposal will negatively affect commercial and residential affordability and that this will have a negative impact on many businesses, including the very businesses that our economy relies on, restaurants, bars, and cafes, but there are others too. Somehow, um, I feel something that's very important has gotten lost in this, and that's that renters too will pay the higher rates. Um, and they're not subject to any reduction and they'll h pay the higher rates quickly because those buildings that have multiple units and only one meter will burn through 16 CCFs really, really quickly, extremely quickly. Um, some renters are, on the, are amongst the poorest of the poor in our community and they will have increased burdens due to this because those burdens will be passed down from the owners to the renters. We all know that's how it works. So there's a social justice issue component to this as well. Um, this issue certainly needs more study. Um, we should not gamble on affordability. We always talk about it, especially during election time. And here we are with an opportunity to not gamble on affordability and study this more. Um, we should also should not gamble on the business community and ever, but certainly not in this difficult business environment. Um, decline and denial is a lethal combination. Decline of the business community and city government's denial of what is happening here is occurring. And that's extremely troubling to me. We can blame it on other factors, but we certainly play a role in what's happening in this city, particularly with respect to the business community. We can pretend it's not us, but we're part of it. There is much more we can do to learn about the impacts of this proposal. Uh, for example, on the RAF TELUS website, they, order, they, uh, they have a service called Rate Case Support, and I'm gonna read from the website. Clients benefit from our ability to explain complex cost of service methodologies in an effective manner. One of the key elements of this explanation is a model that identifies the assumptions used in the filing and shows the calculations. Having a model allows the utility the opportunity to conduct sensitivity analyses prior to the filing and, I quote, to efficiently determine the impact of any changes. Um, this service is typically done for regulated utilities, but it's available for municipalities. This hasn't been done and that should be done before we take this vote. And this is extremely important. 
they offer what's called an affordability study. I'm going to read from their website. Affordability is a growing concern. Water and wastewater rates consistently increase at rates that exceed inflation and wage growth. We have worked with many municipalities to gauge the impact of ever-increasing water and sewer rates on different socioeconomic components within the larger customer base. We need to hire Raftelis to do this study so we can learn the impacts of this proposal on affordability before we vote on this. I'm surprised this isn't, wasn't done, but we need to do it and we can do it. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the process. Um, though the money for the consultants was not in the FY16 budget, the administration has been working on this since last August. No updates, no preliminary reports, no community outreach. Um, city Council and the public had no knowledge of this until this was proposed by Jan in January. That is poor process. In January, we got, we got this proposal and we're told that we need to vote on this this year. We do not have to. We have a system that's been in place for decades and we don't have to vote on this this year. The charter doesn't preclude collaboration <coughs> and the separation of powers doesn't preclude collaboration. It's good to share information and the charter does not preclude good communication. The council and public should have been included on this a lot earlier. Compare this to the process in the stormwater and flood control fee. There was a task force of citizens formed that studied it for a year and a half before making recommendations. Compare it to the last override process. Each ward was visited to discuss the impacts of an override. Now compare that to this process. We had two public hearings. They were not well attended. We didn't do enough. This is a major policy change and the current process was extremely insufficient. Out of fairness, but businesses need time to budget for an increase at a minimum. But I oppose this policy and the process. The Community Resources Committee is doing a study on the business community. Two of the goals, I'm quoting one of the requesters of the study, are as follows. One, to determine the real status of the restaurant and retail community. And two, identifying pressures and trends. If we pass this and then go looking for what's impacting the business community, that would be ridiculous. That would be a wasted opportunity and it would just be foolish. We should not pass this until we do our own economic study. That, that's extremely clear to me. This is what I propose. I, I suggest that we learn what the impacts will be through an impact study coupled with a more inclusive process over the next year. The council should hire Raftelis budgeted with an express line item in 2017 to do a rate case support study which would inform us of the full impacts of this proposal. The council should hire Raftelis with an express line item in the 2017 budget to do an affordability analysis. If we move away from the current and equal system, which I don't think we should, but if we choose to, we should also consider a substantially lower third rate for, for the medium and large users so that the larger users, including restaurants, cafes, and bars, and the, and, the, and the very businesses that we rely on, don't have as much incentive to leave the city as many other businesses are doing and take their jobs and revenue with them. And I also want to point out that many of the people who work in those businesses that are leaving are um, people who are not rich, and that's another social justice issue. But until we do a complete and thorough and informative study, we can get the revenues we need under the current structure as we have done each and every year since this fee has existed. Council LaBarge, uh, do I have an opportunity to respond to some of that I, well, information? Or that's okay. Do you have an objection? Um, not, not, I just wanted to provide some additional information about that. Okay. About some of the information. Because Councillor um, Adams, I know, made an inquiry today to RAF tell us to ask them whether they have ever done a rate case study for the city of Northampton. Um, and the question was odd because the rate case study is something that's done for uh, bodies that are, you know, usually utilities that are appearing before the Department of Public Utilities. So the answer was no to that because I think the question was had we ever done, had they ever done something like that? Um, any other time in Northampton. But the rate study that Raftelis did for us did, did do a deep analysis of all of, the, um, of, of all of our customer base. That was talked about when they came before you. And the creation of the tiers was looked at in terms of, the, uh, in terms of all of the factors uh, that go into you know, what makes up our customer base versus other customer bases. So the idea that we didn't hire them to do a rate and we hired them to do a rate study. We did not hire them to do a rate case study because we're not a public utility that's going before the DPU. So I guess that's I, I'm I'm a little bit mystified by that because the folks from Raftelis have been here three times 
Um, they've appeared before you. They sat here. No questions were asked at the last meeting, um, and now this is being brought forward. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused by it, but I can certainly get an answer for them about about that um, to to clear up whatever distinction there is here, because there was a very simple question asked, um, and there was confusion because they were un they were. Un unsure why that we, we would have been asking if we would do a rate case study since we don't have a you know a case before the DPU which is what a rate case study is for um, national grid is currently before the DPU with a rate case um, so um, that was I think some confusion but I I would have welcomed the opportunity to get more information about that from ref tell us sure and I have the email right here right here which states that they're typically performed on regulated utilities and they do not say it can't be done in a municipality but also they, we can also do an affordability study. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Council LaBarge. Mayor, hearing some of the um, public speaking this evening, and especially the Chamber of Commerce, where they apparently, on lack of awareness, and I have great concerns of reading <clears throat> what was given to us, while the City Council has been considering this proposal for a few months, the Chamber's outreach to our members started in mid-March. I heard one of the business owners ask if there was any way possible you could hold it off for a month or two months where you could get together with the business people here in the city and also including Florence. Would it hurt to have another meeting to be with them? What effect would that have on you if you held another meeting? Uh, I'm happy to hold whatever meetings are necessary to talk to anybody about this, as I've been since I since we first introduced it in January. Um, you know, I, I know the chamber is saying they're concerned about that. I, I but again, I I went to a ch chamber economic development um, meeting on a Friday, February 19th, um, which was you know mid you know mid to late February to make the presentation on this. Um, so. The idea that they weren't aware of it till mid-March or didn't begin outreach till mid-March, I can't really address that. I know we've been um, putting information out about it consistently. Um, there have been articles in the paper about it. Um, and we've been trying to, you know, again, we can only put the information out there. We can't um, force our you know, friends in the uh, newspaper to print it necessarily. But, um, but we have been trying to put out information. But I'm, again, I'm welcome to welcome the opportunity uh, to meet with folks and to talk with them about this. You know, in would, terms would of the- Would this hurt if we held this vote back until you had a meeting? In terms of the timing, the uh, yes. in terms of the timing, we have um, our, the only thing that we have right now that we're working on is we do have to create a, um, we do have to create a city budget, and I'm required to submit that to you uh, by, when? Uh, by May 15th. Um, and so I need to be able to, um, you know, hopefully have these rates in place uh, because that's a major component of how we build the water enterprise fund budget and the sewer enterprise fund budget. That's essentially a major component of the revenue. So that's why we tried to bring it forward to you in January so that we could, um, you know, so that we could get get you get your process started earlier we, we we came a little bit later last year the first year we did it um, and we found that we needed more time so that's why we brought it to you in January so a delay would um, what's the meeting right now uh, it's this is the April meeting so we have another meeting on April 21st um, so there's certainly the potential to have um, to have a meeting and I can certainly it also allow me the opportunity to talk to Raf Tellis as well um, and try to clear up any um, misconceptions about that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's certainly an option. Um, I, I'm just concerned because of what I heard as a counselor tonight, which I didn't know, of a listing of the businesses that also were not happy here. So I feel, as a mayor, that your transparency in with the chamber and reaching out to the businesses sit down and see if some kind of a compromise can be made. And I have to agree, I heard today, tonight, from a resident that businesses are the heart of our city. And I agree, I come from a family of all business people. And I think this is very crucial here that we reach out to the business people. And I'm asking you as a mayor, if you could at least come forth and 
work with the chamber, reach out in Florence and the city of Northampton to work to see how and what we can do to make a compromise. I, again, I, I, I'm, as I said, I'm happy to meet with folks to talk about these, to talk about whatever the questions, whatever the issues are, to give the presentation again, to talk about it. Um, uh, and, and again, I, as I said at the last meeting, and I've said it when I proposed these rates, I, I believe that the, the rate structure that we built is, is, is proper, and I think it's, it's, uh, it, it suits Northampton. It's, um, we look around the state at what other uh, communities have moved to, um, and uh, I think in 2000, about 50% of communities, or less than 50%, had a flat rate structure. Um, now, fast forward to 2014, about uh, two-thirds of communities are moving towards this uh, tiered rate structure. And, um, and we can provide you information on, on the rationale. I, the other point of it is I think that when we look at the numbers um, and you look at the tiering, I mean, the larger customers are paying a lower rate, a lower CCF rate than the um, highest uh, tier two consumption uh, of the smaller rates. And I think that's sometimes lost when we're looking at it. Um, we put together a, you know, we put together a, a another bar chart to show you how the rates, how the how the um, how the consumption breaks down across the rates. I don't know if you have that. Um, sure, I've, I've um, you know, on one of our on one of our um, slides, we talked about the distribution of customers by meter size. It's on the original slideshow, and it basically just shows that one inch and larger uh, represents five percent of our uh, total customers. Uh, Ninety-five percent is one inch and smaller. And then what we did, because I, I don't think we had this before, but we looked at water consumption. What's the percentage? How, how is water consumption arrayed um, by, by meter class? Um, and so, you know, that five percent of the um, of the customer base uh, consumes 53 percent of the water. Um, they're they're just our, they're just our largest consumers of water, and um, and then you can look at the tiering. Um, you know the the tier one uh, zero to 16 CCF uh, represents 29 percent, uh, and then 18 percent is the um, is the tier two. But obviously 53 47 is kind of the split. Um, in terms of water consumption, but the split in terms of distribution of, of customers by meter size is 95.5. So, you know, when we look at that, and we, that, I mean, that's, so that's part of what's gone into creating this system. Um, and we're also looking at the fact that there is different infrastructure size and different demands on infrastructure, which again is a very common uh, methodology. It's the methodology we had before. We've always had um, uh, fixed rates by infrastructure size. Um, what we're trying to do is update those to make them uh, more, you know, more a percentage of our, of our overall revenue. So, um, so you know, that's the information additional information, I'm happy to answer other questions. I'm happy to meet with anyone, any business groups. I mean, particularly the fixed fees, because I know that's an issue that people have. Those aren't the fees that are before you right now. It's really the volumetric rates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what you do on the volumetric rates, you know, that's, that's one thing. The fixed fees, which are controlled, the administrative fees, that's another thing that we can have conversations with people about as well. So. Um, Again, I, I, my goal here has been to try to put out as much information as possible and to get as much feedback as possible. Councilor Murphy. Well, just another question for the mayor. Uh, since first reading, you have lowered the volumetric rates in both classes. Feedback from whom convinced you that that was a good thing to do? From the volumetric? You lowered the rates. Yes. What feedback and from whom did you receive it between first reading and now it's that been, resulted in your it's been, doing it's, that? It's been some of the larger users, again, because one of the one of the things that hap that's happening, I don't have the slide in front of me, but you know, when we're when we're updating the fixed fees, um, you're you're seeing some impacts where a business, I think, um, I think it was, I think it might have been Fairfield Inn, which is on one of the slides, but part of, a big part of the, in, you know, $400 increase, for example, um, uh, a, a, a 300 of that is the fixed fee increase. 
so you're seeing a combination of the change, the one-time change in the fixed fee, because this is not, the fixed fees are not going to go up every year. We're trying to basically just adjust them uh, to get them to a, to a more realistic level. I mean, charging the $1 uh, fixed fee, quarterly fixed fee for, for a 5 8 inch meter, I don't know when we adopted that, but that's clearly one of the things that we were looking at, is to try to get more um, stable revenue from fixed fees. So that was a, a situation where you had the fixed fee change happening, and then you had the increase in the water uh, rate as well happening at the same time. So we could adopt the volumetric changes and later address the fixed fees, and that would have a profound impact on the bottom line for these huh? large volume users. Well, the, the vo yeah, I mean, part of the reason why I lowered the volumetric rate was because of that tandem effect that was happening. Um, not happening so much. Um, in the smaller classes, um, uh, because obviously in the smaller classes, the fixed fees are not at the same level. Um, so that was, that's one of the issues that happened. I mean, the other thing, frankly, that's happening too, and, and we tried to point this out, is you know, we did a zero increase last year. Um, and I was very clear um, when um, I was actually looking back at the article that Fred Contrada wrote a year ago, um, where I was you know, very clear. It's like, you know, we can, we're going to freeze them, but we're, you know, these same capital costs that I was talking about a year ago are there, are present, and we're going to have to address them. So, um, so that, you know, part of that is we're also trying to keep our, our, our budget plan in place to be able to address those long-term capital needs. So. So that, those are the sort of the two things that were happening um, together, which had, uh, uh, I think, a distorted effect on the larger um, on the larger businesses with a larger infrastructure. So that was why um, trying to lower the volumetric rate and shift some of that revenue over to capital stabilization uh, was to try to mitigate that a little bit. That was the um, that was the goal. But in terms of the over, um, again, I still believe firmly that the that the rate structure, the way we have it uh, tiered, is sound. Uh, it mirrors many other rate structures around the Commonwealth. It's not a commercial residential. Um, it's a small user and a large user. Uh, uh, you know, based on infrastructure size, um, and and just you know by virtue of that, consumption is a is a factor as well. Um, and it's not, and again, it's not uh, universal. When you look uh, at the, um, when you look at the impacts, you know, in the, the latest chart that we put out, and I think the Gazette printed it recently, you know, there are some businesses that are showing, um, you know, very little to negative impact. It really is about water consumption. Uh, and again, that's why, you know, that, that's really what it comes down to is the consumption, which is which is what we're showing you by the distribution by water consumption. If you're a large consumer, um, even though your rate is going up lower than the rate on residential, um, you're still going to see an increase because you're a larger consumer. Um, uh, in terms of the multifamily, and I've, I've had a number of, of emails with people and conversations with people, again, um, if you're going to talk about a multifamily, you have, to do an, you have to do an accurate comparison to a single family home. So what we've done in some cases is we've had somebody say, I've got a three family home, and I've got a 5 8 inch meter, and I'm not going to get the 16 CCF discount for all three of my tenants. But if you run it through the computer or through the calculator, which we've done, and we've broken it out, and we've shown them, OK, you're, you're going through the calculator. I mean, the only way to give all, to fairly and equitably give all three of those people that, that discount would be to actually show that they each use, that one of them or all of them use less than 16 you know, CCF, which you can't really do without a meter. Um, but, but when you compare that to three single family homes standalone, and you use the same, you put in the same consumption, but then you also have to factor that each one of those units is also paying an individual meter fee, which they're not paying in the three family. Um, the difference is when you price it out in the end, it's really not a significant difference. Um, and I've demonstrated that to Mr. Church, who emailed me. Yeah. Um, and you can, it's, I mean, again, it's not, it's, it's like if you have a three family unit um, and they're consuming X amount of water, um, you know, divide it by three and run it through three separate times to, as a single family home, and that's really the true comparison. 
um, and it's re and it's re the differences are 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 small. And again, you say, well, why don't you just give them that discount? Well, how fair is that to the single family user whose water is being metered that you're going to give an unmetered tenant um, that conservation rate? Um, so that's the. It's very difficult to design a system that captures everybody's water usage. Um, and so the multifamily one and the and the um, you know the apartment one um, is a factor, and some of them are metered separately. Some of our condos have separate meters, um, but that's that's just the uh, that's just the, the one of the trade-offs in the system. Can you consider revisiting the fixed cost for our highest volume meters? Is that a possibility? The fixed cost. Do you mean the infrastructure the in, costs? Yeah, the uh, in terms of the um, the, the size of that. The size of the, fixed rates. Of the fixed rate for the mm -hmm. I mean, it's something that we can. Uh, well, certainly, I can. We can talk to. We can have a conversation with folks about what the rationale is for them. Mm -hmm. um, and we've looked at. We've compared them to other uh, rates in the area. Um, the rates we're proposing for the fixed fees and for the fire lines are lower than uh, other surrounding. It's a small community of people that have the big rates. That is correct. That is correct. Yep. They have the big infrastructure as well, um, and they have the you know, infrastructure that needs the you know, that, that is drawing a lot of water through the system, um, and and the system is structured to be able to support those larger uh, larger pipes. And again, that's the I mean that is the rationale for why we are doing this based on infrastructure size. We're not doing it based on income. We're not doing it based on residential versus commercial. We're doing it on your footprint in the, in the infrastructure and your consumption, uh, which is a, you know, which is an industry tested industry standard for, uh, for these kinds of systems. So this is the proposal that I, you know, put forward. We've, we've given it a lot of thought. We've talked about it. Um, again, I'm happy to meet with um, meet with folks to talk about the fixed fees, which are you know, the things that are within my control. Um, but um, but I but I feel very strongly that these volumetric rates are are um, are appropriate um, and are appropriate, particularly given our fiscal uh, what we need to do in terms of the water and sewer enterprise. Are you all set? Yeah. Oh, if anyone else has a question. I have another question or another comment, but I'll let other people go. Um, you already have the floor. Why don't you go ahead? Well, no, uh, let, let other people go for a minute because this Council is a Bidwell, different topic. You've spoken already. Is there someone yep. else who would not like the uh, Councilor Bidwell? And then, then we'll then we'll get to you. And back after everyone. No, Councilor Bidwell, you're you're up. You haven't spoken. Yet. Uh, for, for, for me, this has been an interesting exercise, learning the value of having a, a second reading, uh, a second vote, because the. Uh, you'll recall I was a, a pretty enthusiastic supporter of the proposed new methodology and the rates three three weeks ago, and I still think the methodology is 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 sound. But what was missing three weeks ago was an understanding of the of of, of what we now know really is a rather disproportionate uh, impact. Um, and I realize it's it's kind of by design, but ne ne nevertheless, medium and and large businesses and some and some non nonprofits have had a, a reasonable amount of the the burden of water and sewer rates shifted to them, and of course I've heard from a lot of businesses about this. But what surprised me a little bit was res homeowners I, I've heard from who have said something to the effect that we know there's a lot of capital uh, improvements coming down the pike. <coughs> We've heard about uh, this antiquated sewer plant that needs replacing, and we know the day is coming. So we assume that when we would run it through the calculator, we'd be, we'd be paying some more to, 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 to pay our share. And they've been surprised that in many cases, it was the, their rates were staying, their total rates were staying the same, or uh, their total bill staying the same or, or, or going down. And I'm, I'm sympathetic to the argument that um, Everybody in the community should have some, as a matter of equity, should have some participation in, 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 in this. And it's, it's, it's just been a surprise to me. In uh, three weeks ago, we had a, 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 some isolated anecdotes. We didn't, we didn't, we hadn't run a whole lot of situations. And, and, and in fairness, the, the, the calculator, 
uh, took a while to get it to the point where the, the, the fire suppression charges were actually being shown on there. So it was, it was, it, it was a while before the picture really became clear. actually not in the calculator. Those aren't in the calculator. They're not in there now. The fixed fees. Yeah, it's just the fixed fees. They're fee. not in there at all now. That's correct, yeah. Uh, well, I guess what I mean to say is it took a while for folks to realize they weren't in there <coughs> on their own, added in to get the, get to, to get the truth. So it, it just took a while for the, for, the, for the true picture to take, to, 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 to take shape. And I guess, too, as I reflect on it, uh, there, is a, there, there is a difference in the, in the, in, in the process from, I mean, I, 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 I applauded from day one the laying out of the presentation and the transparency and our access to the, to, the, to the consultants, but what we didn't have until relatively recently was an understanding where the burden of all this lies. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's, that's what's different for me. And, and I think also that in terms of process, um, I was sort of on the, uh, I wasn't involved in the, the stormwater task force at the chamber, but kind of followed it and w very much appreciated the fact that there was this citizen task force of, of end users, none of whom were totally satisfied with the end product, but nevertheless they, they felt they had early input and a, and, and a sense of involvement, no sense of surprise when it was eventually rolled out. And that's been, that was my experience with, with other public policy uh, changes affecting the private sector, whether it was uh, revising the, ci the, the city's wetland ordinance or revising or developing a demolition delay ordinance or the King Street zoning ordinance. Or the court ordinance. In none of those instances was everyone satisfied with the end product, but there was a sense of inclusion along the way um, that uh, because of the fact that the burden couldn't really be assessed until late and the fact that there wasn't that, that explicit reaching out earlier on, it makes, it, makes, it makes for a very different process and I think a very, and we're seeing the result of a very different sense of, 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 of buy-in and I do appreciate uh, your uh, hearing feedback and your, uh, your, 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 your changes to the, to, the, to, to the proposed rate structure, but it, for, for me, it's, it's a fundamentally different sort of read of the situation than it, than it, than it, than it, than it, than it was three weeks ago. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I will say, though, that in terms of, you know, we did, uh, you know, all of our slides, we did try to provide, we, we did show you the impacts that would happen at the larger, the larger meter sizes, the larger user sizes, and, you know, this was all in the earlier presentation, it's all in the new presentation that showed, you know, that not only showed you real life, but it also showed you, you know, if you were a 5 8 inch user with, you know, 3 CF, 6 CF, 9 CF, and we tried to show a progression. Um, you know, the issue about how it's only following on medium, medium and large businesses, I'm... Not only. I, that's what I'm, I'm a little, I think that's not really based, it's based on anecdote, but in terms of the actual distribution of how, you know, how the rates are arrayed and how the consumption is arrayed, that also has to be factored in. Um, you know, the chart that I just showed you shows you that, and when you look at the revenue, it pretty much tracks to those same percentages. Um, from tier one, tier two, tier three, in terms of um, where the revenue is coming from. So it's not like we're getting 80% of the revenue from the tier, you know, from the fifth, from the one inch or larger. The revenue is really arrayed pretty much in the same proportion um, from the different tiers as well. So, but again, it's it has been helpful to hear from other folks who who have weighed in, as is often the case near the end. Um, and uh, despite our efforts to try to get people to focus on it. But, but, but I, I guess my, there, there, there's, there's more effective and less effective ways of getting folks to focus on it early in the process. Mm -hmm. And we all know um, that there's a very big difference between announcing public hearings and putting uh, slides on a, on a website versus af affirmatively reaching out to, to stakeholders and sitting around the table with them, and I think I think I think that's the I think that's the difference in process. Now, it, it's not always possible to do that, but there have been enough instances where that effort was made and with a successful result that I think that's one of the things different about this. Okay. 
I guess my only response would be I was sitting around a table on February 19th with the Chamber Economic Development Committee, the same committee that worked on all those other issues you talked about. So um, I, I did try to reach out to that group. Um, myself, I reached out and said, can I, come, can I come meet with you and talk to you about it? So, um, but it was, it was a fully formulated methodology and a fully formulated mm -hmm. proposal that mm -hmm. as opposed to in the works, what do you think? Can we tweak? Mm -hmm. Okay. Council Labarge, you were next. So, Mayor, my question is, do you think that since Susan Beck is here, there is a possibility you could set up a public hearing for the businesses and let them be able to try to work out a compromise here? I don't know, Suzanne, if that's a possibility with the mayor that you could actually do this before our next city council meeting? As I said before, I'd be happy to have a meeting with um, with members of the business community, as I've been happy to meet with them all I along. Know you and I have met with them all along, so I'd be happy to do that. Um, in terms of the, you know, in terms of the revenue needs and all the other things, uh, we've put that all out there as well, and, and I can do that again. Uh, so, it right now, and I have to agree what I'm hearing, from Councilor Bidwell. I think the transparency is so important, and especially when we did the storm audio utility fee with all the hearings we've had. And Mayor, I have to say, yes, I have worked with you. I have sent you several emails. You have gotten back to residents, working with them, and explaining to them exactly how we can help them out. And you've been excellent with that. But what bothers me is hearing from other businesses that I have not heard from. And I think it's very, very valuable that we put this in place and at least have one more hearing. And I think with the chamber, they are very, very successful at doing this and with you, Mayor. And I think it's gonna make me feel better when I go to vote next time that I know that the business people that were brought up tonight and were here have the opportunity to say, what they feel, what type, or whatever you feel that some kind of a compromise could be made. So um, just a reminder, we're, we're actually speaking to the amendments, so kind of strayed from that a little bit, but just uh, more questions on the revision <coughs> proposes amendments. Councilor Murphy? Mm -hmm. Well, this, I think, relates to the entire question any of it and and that is the fact and i'm not speaking i've been speaking about the administration this is the administration's proposal but uh, now i want to talk about us as a city council and our relationship with our business community when we when they come here to see us it's usually confrontational and it's usually because they're not happy with us um we haven't really worked to nurture a very good relationship with them. And I'll give you a couple examples. Um, as a city council, not the administration, but us, us. And if you recall, many of us were here when, when uh, Mayor Higgins tried very, put a lot of effort into trying to put a hotel over here because it created property taxes and meals taxes and room occupancy taxes and all sorts of good taxes. And she was very much in favor of that. Her efforts didn't succeed. And then we have Mr. Galiboff from the Hotel Northampton who without really any help from us, spent over $10 million and put a Fairfield Inn in that generates last year, say, $355,000 in property taxes, meals taxes, and, uh, and room occupancy taxes. Our thanks to him was to not give him a tiff, and some of our body decided to insert themselves in his labor relations and march into his building to say thank you. Hell of a nice thing to do to the guy, okay? That's how we do it. Another example of that, um, Ms. Beck came here uh, years ago with concerns about street life on our sidewalks. Now, granted, the state Supreme Court sort of took the wind out of that, out of that process, but then sub subsequently this body comes up with a vibrant sidewalk resolution that actually calls conflict and confrontation a valuable form of communications. You know, just it, it, granted, the Supreme Court took that away from us, but then we value the very confrontation in a resolution that they were concerned about in the first place. So we're not sending them 
a message that we love. I mean, these folks put private dollars, entrepreneurship, commitment, time, talent, treasure into their businesses in our city. I mean, the success of our commercial sector is not due to us. It's due to them and their personal commitment to having their businesses be successful and successful in, in our community. We just have to better understand the pressures they're under and a way that we can assist them given the resources you know, th that we have. We can't simply rely on the fact that, oh, once a year we don't split your tax rate, so you should be happy with that. I mean, if we had a better working relationship with these folks, they, we, we could nurture with them the understanding that we have some of the same pressures that they have in their businesses. You know, we have requirements placed on us by our regulators, you know, the state and federal government. A lot of why we're doing this with our water rates is because we have pressure from above us that we need to do and fund this stuff, and we don't have a choice about it. You know, and if we had a better working relationship with them, we could say, hey, we're between a rock and a hard place on this end because they're going to make us do this, and we have to find a way to pay for it. And I think if our relationship at the foundation level was better with these folks and we had a little more respect for them, I mean, many of these people with the blizzard last year, I'm sure, in the first quarter when all the snow was going, had to put personal funds in to make ends meet in the first quarter, a lot of them, because there weren't enough people in their businesses for them to make money. You know, we don't think about that kind of thing here because generally we're not comprised of business people. There was a time when the council was all business people, but it really isn't anymore. So we on a functional level in our debates really, we don't understand their pressures and because of that divide between us, um, you know, when we see them, they're here because they're upset with us and they're not really in a position to want to understand the pressures that we're under, which are much like theirs. We must do something and we must pay for it and we don't have a choice. So we have to spread that out. I think if we, if we spent more time understanding these folks and what their pressures are and their needs are, I think they'd have a greater willingness to understand what we're trying to do and the pressures that are, are on us. It's just, again, just sort of a comment on our mutual environment. So to Councillor Labarge's question, if you'd like to delay this vote so that I'd have an opportunity to meet with the business community, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, um, delay it until um, the second meeting in April, um, which would be, um, yeah, that we, we would be able to work with that in terms of. 24th. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Councillor Murphy has made that motion. I would make that motion that we. My one question would be, though, you do have a motion to amend the original uh, right we have, we have to so 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 we have a motion on the floor yeah no i so that's yeah uh, and i would make this motion i think that the amendment has merit and we should probably approve the amendment and then i'll make the motion okay. well we're still debating the amendment um councilor Sher. can i just just to councilor murphy's point since he editorialized can i just make a comment <laughs> response to that. Sure. I just wanted to point out that we're actually are conducting a study to ask the business owners what their pressures are. So we are very much reaching out to ask them that. Yeah, I, I would like to add to that that uh, <coughs> Vice President and myself actually taking in our shortcomings and acknowledging our shortcomings. I mean, I'm not completely naive. I've been working downtown Northampton for over downtown Northampton and Florence for over 30 years. I've not owned the business, I've managed the businesses and I've been functioning with the same pressures and service. I'd also like to point out that the business community is not exclusive by coming to speak to us when they're angry. It's not exclusive to the business community. Virtually anyone who comes, very rarely do people come and say, boy, you guys rock. It's frequently to be critical and this is the purpose of this. The other point is, is that for the business community, in fact, actually, I, I, I don't think it's, first of all, the split tax rate, which is invoked several times, and uh, I would like to reemphasize my commitment to keeping a single payer tax rate. Um, my adamant, and has been consistent since I've been serving. But it's not just that. The stormwater fee, actually, the rain tax, if you will, was actually established to support and protect the downtown businesses. Ward 6 is not going to flood. And FEMA is not going to uh, come up short on us if we don't 
reinforce our infrastructure to protect downtown from flooding. If that happens, all the downtown businesses, mortgages, the banks, everything collapses, and everyone, and the, everyone participates in that and pays into that knowing that they're supporting the life's blood of this community. That is why we invest in that. That's what we asked the community to do, and they did not complete, in, <laughs> as, as, as uh, Councilor Bidwell pointed out, there, were, there, was, there was unhappiness and there continues to be unhappiness. But the fact is, is that that is part and parcel, that project and that fee is dedicated to preserving and protecting the downtown business. It's borne by the entire community. And, and these, these schisms are frequently exaggerated. I'd also take issue with the resolution and your interpretation of it, but that's a different argument for a different day. But the fact is what's more important is as we go forward, this committee that uh, Council Shara chairs is not an indictment community, it's a committee. It's the purpose of this is to actually find out all the pressures that are experienced, that the business community, the, the public experiences, the property owners experience, and the workers and employees experience. And, the, and we're soliciting everyone's input. And to Councilor Bidwell's frustration of how do, you, how do you project this so that everyone gets and participates and you get full involvement, it's difficult. Because usually what prompts people to bring, to come to speak, is when action is implemented, as Council Murphy is referring to. When action is, comes to us, once it gets through the process and comes to us, that's when people react. So I invite the businesses that are, the business owners who are here who remain, and the business owners who hopefully will read about this tomorrow, to offer testimony. You don't have to come and testify at the podium to a uh, written, uh, written testimony sent to Pam here, uh, care of City Hall, will be introduced. And we, we want to do a holistic review and assessment of the community and the impacts that it has. Not only water fees, but uh, everything in the whole universe, online purchasing, uh, the global economy, ev everything from, from parking to Things, things that we can do something about and things that we can't do something about. But at least so that we have an accurate assessment instead of anecdotal debates, which we're frequently left with. Um, so with that said, I think that maybe we're ready for a vote on the revisions as they were proposed for the amendment. And with the acceptance of this amendment does not mean we've accepted the fees in toto. It's only the, the mayor's proposed revisions. So that would be the this vote, Councilor Adams. I have a, I have a point. Um, the stormwater fee is absolutely not simply to protect downtown business owners. That's not the sole goal. It's one of the major impetuses for the. Thank you. The I have the floor. Thank you. And so it's it's to do citywide stormwater and flood control measures. Certainly, one of the goals is to protect downtown. But but the um, but to say that it was enacted to protect downtown is is not true. It's it's much broader than that. Thank you. Point of order, can oh, we yeah. vote on this amendment? Because we're no longer talking about the amendment. We're, yeah. We need yeah. Okay. Or yeah. just, or just w withdraw the amendment if we're going to postpone it. No, I'd happy to vote the amendment pleasure. first. Okay. So on the amendment, this can be by voice, or would you prefer? Uh, roll call. Okay. All right, roll call, please. <laughs> Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Lavarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Adams. No. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Okay, so the revisions, the amendment passes. The now, Council Murphy, you have a motion. I was going to move that we postpone further consideration of this to our next meeting to give the mayor time to have further discussions with regards to the fixed fees that they're involved in. Is there a second? With the business owners yeah, and the chamber. That's the people who. Is there a second? Second. Second. And Council Labarge seconds. Any discussion on that? Discussion on Council, Council O'Donnell and then Council Bidwell. Discussion on the postponement. This is a good graph. Um, I, I, I can't, is this red? Yes. I'm colorblind. <laughs> the red. Is this red? 95, the 95% of the customers. Um, I just want to be clear, I don't expect anything else, but um, you know, I, I want to make sure that 
any meetings that happen are, of course, completely open to the public, and the public are, in, are involved. I don't like the idea of last-minute modifications being made only by business interests. And I think that's important to tell the public. Again, 95% of the customers in the city. Councilor Bidwell. Councilor uh, Adams. I, I just had a question for the mayor. Um, in terms of your, your, your budget process and timetable, which I'm quite sensitive to, um, would it be possible to um, defer this, to, to defer the, the application of the new, the, the new methodology and go with the old rate structure and adjust those rates uh, to a level necessary to generate adequate revenue for this next year for budget planning purposes and, and to be consistent with the capital improvement plan? Um, it, would, would that be feasible for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the next year? It's not what I would do. Um, um, I, it's not what I would propose. Um, and I think you would see, um, well, I think you'd see some different impacts if that's were what I propose. I think this is, I think, uh, yeah, I think between the sewer changes, I think a lot of what you're seeing on the reduction on the residential side is the sewer change. That's one of the big ones um, because we're doing 80% of sewer. But no, I mean, that's, uh, uh, that's not what I would put forward. So, um, well, clear, clearly, it's not what you've been put forward. Mm -hmm. uh, but, 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 would it be possible to proceed with a with a with a budget process um, uh, if if a new methodology, after further tweaking and examination of burden sharing and everything else, was 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 delayed? I mean, the budget can be passed. I mean, the budget can pa be passed. Um, you know, obviously you want it to be contingent on revenue that you think you're going to earn, or that you're going to be able to earn, otherwise you're going to have a deficit, a revenue deficit at the end of the fiscal year. Um, you know, the budget I, that I will propose, uh, again, at, at the beginning of May or middle of May, will be, um, you know, will be you know, based on the operational and the, and the capital and maintenance needs of those two enterprise funds. So, um, uh, you know, it, Obviously, if the council rejects this proposal, then I have to go back to the uh, drawing board and to try to come up with something else. Um, if it does not wish to vote at all on any proposal, then we'll maintain the FY15 rates would remain in place. Um, so that would be the impact of that. Uh, and um, this is to the postponement we're discussing. So, but I, so. I you know, contrary to to what I've heard, I, we did spend a considerable amount of time working on this proposal. So to have it um, scrapped in the 11th hour and to say, we're just going to throw it out, I would at least like the opportunity to, um, to meet with folks to talk about it, um, have that opportunity uh, before we begin. Because uh, uh, I do believe it is well thought out. I believe it is well researched. And I believe that, um, that uh, we hired the best people to help us do it. And I think we can we can demonstrate that to people. Councilor Adams. Unfortunately, if this were not kept under wraps from August till January, we might not be in this position. But to the to the motion that's on the table, um, I don't oppose a continuance. But I mean, that's you know that's harmless, but it doesn't help. We need a rate impact study. We need an affordability study. Well, that's one of the questions yeah. I can answer. Thank you. Yeah. Mayor. And we need the council to do its own economic study because, again, it would be ridiculous to pass this measure, which will impact the business community, and then go asking the business community what impacts them. Imagine if you're sitting here, you're one of the businesses who came here tonight, and you're telling, and you're telling this council you're going to affect us, and it's going to negatively affect us, it's going to impact us negatively, and then we pass this thing, and then we come to them and say, so what's impacting you? That would be ridiculous. We should avoid that by voting this down. We have a... We have a we have um, a structure that's been in place since this rate was created, and it's worked. Let's do that. So to the post moment. Um, any further discussion on the post moment? All those in favor of the post moment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? OK. Back to the agenda. So this will come up again at the next council meeting for uh, further discussion. Back to the regular order. Counselor. 
Uh, Council LaBarge. Yes. Now, the mayor will come back and give us a report that City Council made. I would presume so. That would be, that would be my expectation, yes. Thank you. Um, so first up on the resolutions, this is item 16.047. This is a resolution to, da uh, to adopt the, the uh, capital improvement plan for FY2017, FY21. So second. second. Any further discussion? I just want to point out, if I, I'm sorry. We might, no, okay, no, go ahead. I just want to point out that the capital improvement plan is five years of planning for the wastewater treatment plant and our, our replacement of water mains and, and other important infrastructure, and we really have no uh, established way to, to pay for a lot of that. So I, if you vote for this, I hope that you support um, raising the revenue that's required to fund the capital improvement. Councilor Adams. Absolutely, and we can do that through the current structure. <laughs> Any further discussion on this point? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. 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 Passes in first reading will be <coughs> up at the next meeting on the 21st. Um, now back in, up to the financial item, uh, financial order items. The 16.037 financial order for FY17 capital plan. This is $225,000 for LED street lights per project. Uh, this first reading. Second. Motion to made. Second in discussion. For the discussion, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Next up, 16.038 financial order for FY17 capital plan. This is $129,200 for voice over IP from uh, the fund 2620 INET and technology. This is uh, first reading. I accept a motion. Second. Seconded. Uh, discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Uh, item 16.039, the financial order for $375,000 to appropriate for the new radio consoles for the dispatch center is first reading. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. 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 Um, okay. Item 16.040, financial order for FY17 capital plan, $1,354,013 for wastewater treatment plant improvements. Move approval. Second. Any further discussion? Councilor O'Donnell's point holds on this one. Uh, and, and my ward is interested in it as well. Yes, it's right. <coughs> Roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Goodwill? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Barge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Yes. Item 16.041, a financial order to appropriate $500,000 for street resurfacing to authorize borrowing and issuance of bonds, et cetera. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Adams? I don't know where we're on. I was just at the bathroom. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Councilor LaBarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Adams, are you passing? It's the financial order for $500,000 for street resurfacing. Yes. No, I'm not passing. I'm voting yes. Got it. Thank you. Uh, item 16.042, financial order to replace the uh, voice over IP system. Okay. Motion's made. Second, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Goodwill? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. 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 Item 16. 
0.043, the financial order for FY17 capital plan of $585,000 for a fire truck. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Item 16.044, the, the financial order to appropriate $275,000 from FY16 free cash to the North Hampton Public Schools project. Okay, perfect. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion? I'll please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Lodge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. 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 All these pass and first reading so far. So 16.045, the financial order to appropriate $2,860 from CPA funding to the Leeds Historic Walking Tour Project. Um, I have the motion's made second. Second. This is, by the way, this is the cover letter from uh, uh, Brian Adams, who's the, the chair um, of the CPA. Chairman Dwight, city councilors to encourage greater diversity of applicants for CPA funds. Broaden community participation and make, uh, and make apply, uh, applying less formidable. The Community Preservation Committee developed a small grants process for funding pr requests up to $3,000, with the total project cost not to exceed $6,000. <clears> the small grant process was developed to be simpler and less time consuming than the traditional application process. But small grant applicants uh, must still demonstrate their eligibility for funding under the CPA. To expedite the availability of funding, small grant recommendations are provided to the City Council as soon as they are complete. As of February 10th, 2016 meeting, the Community Preservation Committee voted to recommend $2,860 small grant allocation to the Leeds Civic Association for Historic Signage Walking Tour Project. When complete, this project will include seven signs along a half mile route that provide a history of the village of Leeds. And the tour will depict the village in its industrial heyday, inform visitors about the devastating flood, and will complement the neurotic rail trail and Mill River uh, Greenway. The application presented to the CPC, which included, uh, which includes signage locations and examples as attached, and actually presented here, I believe. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact myself or Preservation Plan uh, Sarah LaValle with any questions about the projects if additional information is needed <clears throat> or the committee's recommendations. Thank you, Brian Adams. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge? Yes. 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 Uh, that passes in first reading, 16.046, a financial order authorizing the mayor to execute a lease agreement with New, uh, Northampton Community Television. Move approval. Second. 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 Uh, discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy? Yes. 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 We did uh, 1630, so now we're doing 16.050, which is the order authorizing the acquisition of lot 15 on Southern Way. Move to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Yes. 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 There we go. We're up to second readings. Which one? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Remember there was a request on the Sovereign Way. There was a request of two we readings. Yeah, suspend the rule. Second. Motions are made to suspend rules to allow for a second reading tonight. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those, uh, Councilor Adams? I didn't really sense any urgency or find the basis for urgency persuasive. Any further discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Nay. Uh, second reading. There we go. Second. second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Dw
Yes. 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 Item 15.377. This is the second reading for the ordinance regarding zoning for significant Mr. trees. Second. Welcome any further discussion on this item? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, not happening? Okay. All right. Roll call, please. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Uh, 16.003, this is the ordinance to delete fees from Chapter 174 of the City Code Book. Move approval. Second. Move to approve. It's the second reading. Further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. 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 No. Item 16.005. Uh, uh, this is an ordinance pertaining to the LED lighting. The second reading. To approve. Well, second. It's made. It's your second. Got it. Uh, discussion. <coughs> Roll call, please. Council Carney. Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Council Adams. Yes. Yes. Passes in second reading. 16.028, this is an ordinance to delete the subdivision of land from Chapter 290 of the Code Book. The second reading. Move to approval. Motion's made and seconded. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Yes. Murphy? Yes. 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 This is a referral to the Committee on Legislative Matters. This is uh, an ordinance to provide for limited time parking on King Street by revising Section 312-104, Schedule 3 of the City Code. Mover. Second. second. <laughs> Motion's made and second and second and made and Damn made. Choice. Um, discussion on the referral? Councilor Bidwell? Just curious, where did this originate? Uh, the Transportation Parking Commission uh, reviewed this. So. Yeah. Any other questions on referral? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, no updates? Is there any information requests or committee study requests? We've got hundreds of papers. No new business. I'll accept a motion. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Here's the